So, yeah. So, the floor is yours, Isri, um, to speak on the drafting of stem of claim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, I'm sorry to lose my Okay, basically, uh, just as introduction, uh, my name is Isri Hassan. Uh, I've been practicing as a Uh, so advocate and solicitor uh, almost for 14 years. Uh, I think Dr. Nizam is my senior in BKM. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, normally conduct a training for the Bar Council and also the for, for the State Bar Committee. Uh, but my area of specialization or forte is actually is on Islamic finance litigation. But uh, I do uh, some of these, what we call as tortious claims, and negligence claims and etc. I'm going to share with you uh, the practical part, okay? Practical part of how we're going to draft uh, pleadings or statement of claim for negligence suit. Yeah? Okay, uh, most of you are second year student, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, this has to have some feedback. For, for the Japanese, uh, uh, what we call as a uh, online uh, online uh, meeting, they, they, they prefer everyone to to to, to show uh, your your photo because eh? that is part of their business mannerism. But the one is Japan. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to share my slides uh, with you. Can you change the slide? Most of you can, yes. you can view yes. the slide, right? Okay. Uh, okay, basically for, for litigation purpose, uh, we are talking about civil litigation. So now, of course, you are learning uh, the law of thought. Uh, actually, it's part of the substantive law. I think in your, your final year, you'll be uh, learning about the procedural part, but of course, as part of the exposure, I think uh, I have been invited to, to share with you how to, how to draft the, the statement of claim, the pleadings. Okay, basically, as, as a lawyer, what you need to do uh, or, to, or what you need to know, basically, these uh, three categories of law. Eh? The first is the jurisdictional law. Uh, I guess you have learned this in your MLS, Malaysian Legal System, right? Yes. Jurisdiction yes. of court, etc. Okay, it's got, got some feedback. The substantive law, uh, it's just like your contract law, etc. And the, the procedural law is the, the technical part. I think you'll be learning in your final year, I guess. For other faculty, I think they're in their fourth year, is part in the is part under civil procedure. Okay. Okay, so as a litigation lawyer, when you have a let's say a client approach you. I want to file a negligence claim. It can be a professional negligence, uh, like a motor, legal accident, etc. Those kind of negligence claim. What are you going to advise your client? Okay, basically, these are the three basic elements that you need to, to know and understand thoroughly. Okay? Perhaps I start with the jurisdictional law as well, the first one. Okay, what is meant by jurisdictional law? Okay, jurisdiction law determines forum in multi-forum system. Okay, we have so many courts. Okay, in Malaysia, we have Sharia court. We have civil court. Uh, within the civil court system itself, we have a uh, federal court, different hierarchy, federal court, court of appeal, magistrate court, and sessions court, etc. So each court has their own jurisdiction. Okay, so the legislation or jurisdictional legislation uh, are the laws directed at the court and its power. Okay. The court is not empowered to hear merits of the case if the court has no jurisdiction. So the first thing is jurisdiction. Okay. Some people uh, may argue eh, that uh, jurisdiction is 
part of the procedural law, but, but yes, it's not correct. Okay? I think for further reading, you can have a look at the <coughs> article by Prof. Uh, Scott uh, Dawson, eh? the Georgetown Law Journal. So when we talk about jurisdiction, it is uh, in its own category. Eh? So once the court do not have the, does not possess a jurisdiction, it cannot hear merits of the case. Okay? So that's uh, the first thing. So the challenge as to jurisdiction can be raised at any stage of the proceedings. Even let's say you have filed the claim, then proceeded with filing of the bundle of documents, etc. Uh, and uh, perhaps at a stage that uh, you're calling witnesses. So one of the counsel raised, oh, actually the court has no jurisdiction. It can be raised at that stage. And if the court uh, decides that, oh, I have no jurisdiction, then the court will dismiss the case. Uh, they will strike out the, the case. You need to, to refile at uh, the court with competent jurisdiction. Okay. Uh, then the lack of jurisdiction cannot be waived by consent of parties, nor by exercise of court's discretion. So let's say you want to file a claim in a particular court. Actually, that court does not have a jurisdiction. You cannot say, oh, the court, uh, uh, we uh, as the litigants, we consent uh, to submit to this, uh, to the jurisdiction of this court. No, it cannot be done uh, that way because it is part of the uh, jurisdictional law. Eh? Okay, so in this year, uh, jurisdictional provisions may be found in the federal constitution. Uh, you may have a look at Article 1 to 1. And you have the, the two higher civil court eh? and also 1 to 1 1A, the Sharia courts. The Courts of Judicature Act, uh, laying down the, the, all the provisions relating to jurisdiction on the, the High Court, uh, Sessions Court. Uh, sorry, I court and above, eh? and then subordinate courts, jurisdiction of the session court and the district court. Perhaps you have studied this in your uh, MLS. Eh? <coughs> okay. So perhaps I need your your since uh, I guess you already know. Perhaps since I give you one scenario, uh, so that I can get your feedback. <laughs> okay. In one road accident case involving a car and a motorcycle, the plaintiff, the car owner, wants to file a negligence suit against the, uh, the motorcyclist, the potential defendant, eh? claiming for a sum of RM 1.6 million. So, which court shall have the competent jurisdiction? Okay, I need volunteers. High Court. Siapa yang cakap, eh? Saya Afiq, Muhammad Afiq. Okay, why High Court? Uh, so you are now a qualified lawyer, a senior partner of the firm. You want to advise your client which court to file this claim? So, sorry, sorry. can you can you repeat? Can you explain why you want to file in high court? Oh, um, sebab uh, based on my readings, uh, untuk civil punya. Civil punya jurisdiction dekat High Court boleh sampai 1 juta. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Ini ada yang yang ada dissenting opinion ke different opinions ke ada? Selain beside Afiq. Taklah kata salah tapi ada ada pandangan lain. Tak petik ini nama sini. Ada ni. Nurul Ain Nabilah, Farhan Akilah, Nurashika, tapi gambar terbikai. Ada betul ke Afiqnya jawapan tu? Because it is uh, the claim is more than one million, so you need to file at the High Court. Betul eh? I think yes, because if you want to brought this case to magistrate court, it should be not more than one million. Okay, uh, Iza. Ah yes. Iza, where is the uh, the jurisdiction of the magistrate court? Yeah, entertain practice. Bila cakap tentang practice ni, it's not about uh your punya. It's about connecting uh, all the laws in, into, into practice. Uh, okay, you can study thoughts, you can study MLS, jurisdiction, you can study constitutional law, admin law, be in the final year, maybe the procedural law. 
So for practitioners, we are just linking all the laws into something yang you can file in court. So itu je my, my rule here. Yeah, not teaching each subject. So as a practitioner, as a lawyer, you need to, to know all. So that you can file a claim and then the negligence against you, you and your firm. Lah. Okay, so Iza, apa jurisdiction Mahkamah Magistrate? Ini baru first part eh, jurisdictional law. Kita tak masuk lagi yang lain-lain part lagi. Because <coughs> kalau you salah file means gone. Kalau tak ada case tu too bad eh, dah dekat time bad dah. You withdraw ke ataupun kena strike out, you nak. Refile balik, bad dah. So the first step tu very very important. Mana Izzah tadi? Izzah hilang dah. Ah uh, yes. So apa jurisdiction uh, Mahkamah Magistrate ni? Below 1 million? Ah uh, Yes, below 1 million. Okay. So, apa mahkamah session, apa jurisdiction pula? Tak ada. Um, below half a million. Ada Azrul Ramli nak menjawab ni. Ah, yes. Ini petik je nama-nama ni. Yes, uh, petik. Below half a million for session court. Oh, half a million. So look at you only. Um, untuk session court. Mm -hmm. uh, not exceed one million ringgit. Okay, minimum dia berapa? Um, hmm, hmm. Twenty five thousand. Above fifty thousand ringgit. Twenty. Thousand. Much you all need. You need threshold for bankruptcy. Okay, saya bagi jawapan je lah. Okay. Kalau tengok jurisdiction, uh, ni we talk about monetary jurisdiction eh. Uh, magistrate, kalau selalunya is below 100,000 ringgit lah. Okay, you check balik. You need courts, uh, sorry, uh, sub court act eh. Sub, sub ordinate courts act below 100k. Kalau kalau below 5k tu panggil small claim. Small claim tentu dan kecil ni sebenarnya tak boleh pakai berguam. You hanya terus filekan uh, menggunakan borang di mahkamah eh. Itu small claim lah. Kalau below 100k, you file di magistrate court. Kalau sessions court above 100k, up until 1 million. Betul eh? Itu sessions court lah. Okay, kalau more than 1 million, is high court. You can filekan di high court. So kalau case ni kita filekan di mana? Tak boleh file kat uh, magistrate atau session okay. Confirm semua high court Dekat high court Tak siapa-siapa yang Sebab boleh bagi Because it's 1.6 Sorry 1.6 million Sebab ni lah dia hmm. <coughs> It's exit 1 million so We take it as unanimous decision eh Kan di high court. So, mm, based on my reading, normally um, accident will be heard at magistrate court. But when we look, but when I look about the 1.6 million, so I think the answer is high court. Mm. Okay, dekat mana you baca yang dekat magistrate tu? Eh? Mm. Sama ada I baca ataupun um, masa asasi yang pernah dengar. Buat attachment. Ada buat attachment di magistrate ke apa? Okay. Okay, jawapan ni. Eh. Okay. Jawapan ni sebenarnya rasa-rasanya di magistrate ke? Dia berlantung kepada you argue eh. Adalah setengah tu ada juga difakal di magistrate. Uh, kalau claim tu you rasa ganti rugi dia di bawah 100k lah okay. Ada juga kadang-kadang orang terfalkan di mahkamah tinggi eh. okay. Sebab dia punya claim tu dia, dia look at uh, monetary jurisdiction okay. Kita cakap bila we, we talk about jurisdictional law ni You kena pegang tu tu the, the Court of Judicature Act dengan sub Act Act eh. Tengok dekat section 65 eh, of the sub Act Act okay. Ini is the, the civil jurisdiction of the session court. A session court shall have eh? apa? Ismail? 
one e unlimited jurisdiction to try all action and suits of a civil nature in respect of motor vehicle accidents landlord tenant uh, dengan distress so apa jawapan you all sekarang Okay, kalau kes-kes melibatkan kemalangan ataupun negligence, uh, pelanggaran ataupun pelanggaran jalan raya lah kita kata, eh, motor vehicle, accidents ataupun kes-kes uh, uh, dispute tenancy, eh, you akan filekan di mahkamah session saja. Okay, it is unlimited jurisdiction. Tak kisahlah amount ni 1.6 million ke apa ke, cause it's under dia punya special jurisdiction. Okay, dia punya bidang kuasa khas. Eh. So you need to understand satu general jurisdiction ataupun uh, dia punya monetary jurisdiction But then the satu lagi konsep jurisdiction is the special uh, jurisdiction. Sama juga macam bankruptcy. Eh? Bankruptcy only high court saja yang yang boleh falkan. Dia boleh falkan di high court ke mahkamah tinggi saja. Mungkin lagi claim tu okay, above 100k. So falkan session lah. There is no such thing as uh, bankruptcy di falkan di mahkamah session. Mahkamah tinggi saja. Sama juga dengan grand probate. Kalau ada nak minta surat kuasa mentadbir dan sebagainya. You only fall di high court. So kalau di session court, be careful. Kiss-kiss uh, yang boleh dibawa ke uh, mahkamah section ni uh, motor vehicle accident memang khas dia punya bidang kuasa di mahkamah section so kalau I akan advise tak difalkan di magistrate atau mahkamah tinggi sepatutnya difalkan di mahkamah section eh. so itu dia punya first thing important ni jurisdictional law so you tahu uh, you nak falkan tu di mana kalau you salah tempat then of course you cannot, cannot proceed further lah. Court mungkin boleh strike out ataupun dia ada side file kan striking out application ni. Eh. Okay, then B ni jurisdiction to try all other actions. Maksudnya dekat A ni dia ada uh, dua, tiga jenis ni. Eh. Very specific. Okay, A tu kan. B barulah dia pergi kepada try all other actions and suits. Okay, okay dia tengok value dia. Tak exceed 1 million. So ini baru yang you, you refer tu. You jangan lompat tadi. Okay, so selalunya orang akan tengok, oh, jurisdiction mahkamah uh, session, okay, 1 million. Okay, uh, tak lebih 1 million. Kalau lebih 1 million, okay, you kena kena file di high court. Tak semestinya. Tengok dia punya course of action, subject matter jurisdiction ni. Eh. Okay. Yang lain-lain tu pun ada, kalau restriction of contract, cancellation of activity instruments within jurisdiction, dia dekat bawah ni, eh. within jurisdiction of the session court. Kalau you nak rectify instruments, macam melibatkan companies, Okay, uh, ataupun instrumen melibatkan tanah, undang-undang tanah yang tu bukan di bawah bidang kuasa mahkamah session because you, kalau you tengok uh, tafsiran Companies Act ataupun National Land Code mahkamah tu definisi dia is high court saja. so that's why bila kita buat case-case ni, kena kena tengok uh, kita tak tengok dari segi nilai sesuatu subject matter saja. Okay, you don't, don't confine to just uh, monetary jurisdiction only kita akan tengok semua fact, uh, faktor ni only then we decide okay, kita file at the uh, proper court with competent jurisdiction eh. Okay, ada soalan so far? Kalau ada soalan, um, please kita So, yes. meaning that um, if there is an accident, so it must be brought to session court. Yes, um, kalau dia tengok kat situ eh, motor vehicle eh. Kalau, kalau kecederaan tu apa ni sebab banjir ke bangunan bentuk ke itu mungkin lain sikitlah tapi kalau kemalangan jalan raya normally dia ada code special eh 33kg kemalangan jalan raya so memang difalkan di mahkamah session kebanyakan court akan ada lah dia ada juga difalkan di mahkamah uh, magistrate eh, tapi very very limited lah okey di high court jarang dia memang takkan jarang ada lah kalau kes-kes kemalangan jalan raya kalau you filekan di high court high court akan tendang ke bawah akan tolak je because no no all the, the companies punya issues, land matters, all the big things lah. So this one dikeluarkan daripada uh, bidang kuasa mahkamah tinggi. So all the small, small issue about uh, landlord, tenancy, kata, issue dia tak kompleks sangat. So you give it to the session's court to adjudicate the matter. Okay, clear eh? Ada soalan lain? Okay, boleh teruskan. So first part, you can have Betul-betul faham is the jurisdictional aspect eh. 
Okay, then types of jurisdiction tu, study the facts of the case, identify course of action, determine eh? Okay, banyak category dari segi jurisdiction ni. Eh? You can see it's a subject matter jurisdiction, monetary jadi, berapa dia punya jumlah. Then we also have what we call as territorial jurisdiction eh? You nak file kan di mana? Case okay, action berlaku dinilai. Can you file in uh, bangi punya session squad? Okay, kita ada dekat yang dinilai dengan bangi. Tapi you kena file kan dekat uh, seremban. So, itu you kena determine eh? Kod mana yang ada uh, proper jurisdiction dari segi geographical punya ataupun territorial punya jurisdiction ni. Then statutory ni macam cakap tadi lah. Uh, ada setengah-setengah yang diperuntukkan dalam statute. Hanya mahkamah tertentu sahaja ada jurisdiction ni. So you kena, kena tahu ke semuanya. As far as, as uh, orang kata litigation lawyer, dia tak ada yang kita kata dia buat semua benda ni. Eh. Normally lawyers akan specialize certain, uh, certain areas yang memang betul-betul dia pakar lah. So, kalau orang yang terlampau junior ataupun you tak pernah buat sesuatu action in that kind of uh, tak pernah buat lah uh, case orang yang jalan raya first time you nak buat uh, so kadang-kadang itu ada berlaku kesilapan ni so that's why kita kena belajar dulu uh, maybe dengan, dengan other senior so that you, you ada proper guidance lah eh. okay Habis uh, sebab jurisdiction, the second part is the procedural. Eh. Kalau jurisdictional law tadi tu, dia target dia dekat court, eh. dekat kuasa mahkamah and then dekat dekat court. Uh, procedural law dia punya target is dekat the parties, the litigants, the plaintiff and the defendants. Eh. It governs the process to be followed by parties to vindicate their rights. Okay, It is meant to ensure fairness and efficiency in the funding process. Okay. So berbeza sedikit dengan jurisdiction dan law tadi tu. Procedural law ni boleh diremedikan. Kalau you tak comply certain things, okay, certain procedural requirements, you boleh uh, minta court uh, waive kan dan sebagainya. Ataupun by consent. Katalah pihak satu lagi tak sempat lah guna 14 days, ada MCO dan sebagainya. So uh, I ask for the other side, call the other side the lawyer. Yeah, I need extension uh, another 14 days. Boleh kita? It can can be done that way. Walaupun procedure dalam rules of court katakan 14 days, but you can ask for extension either from the court or from the other side. So it means if the procedural non-compliance it can be remedied. Tak sama dengan jurisdiction. Eh? Kalau you salah jurisdiction, it cannot be remedied. Eh? But dalam procedural law ni pun, there is what we call a serious Uh, non compliance eh. kalau ada mandatory provisions okay, uh, yang bersifat mandatory tu kalau kalau you nak uh, langgar tak boleh eh. so dia akan treated as uh, proceeding sebagai defective ataupun fatal so the case of course akan dibuang lah can, can, can be struck out ataupun the case has been dismissed eh. so procedural uh, law ni kat Malaysia you ada various rules of court lah for high court uh, sessions court dengan magistrate you have, you are governed by the rules of court 2012. Court of Appeal, you have their the own rules, the rules of court of appeal 1994, and the federal court with the uh, rules of the federal court 1995. Eh? So these are the uh, procedural parts. Okay? You can comply how to start a case, nak pakai summons ke, nak pakai what you think, uh, summons ke, FDV ke, all inside eh, the rules of court. Eh? And then it also to be read together with the arahan amalan, the practice direction issued by, by the registry. Uh, registrar of the court ni. Kadang-kadang dia tengok ada High Court of Malaya dikeluarkan uh, berkeliling pendaftar, arahan amalan, nota amalan. So all those things are part of the uh, procedural law eh, yang you kena comply. Okay, clear that part. Macam yang cakap tadi, you belayar katalah macam jurisdiction eh. Okay, jurisdiction, mahkamah session uh, boleh fahamkan kes uh, kemalangan lah. Tiba-tiba you file kan, uh, katalah you want to file the suit at uh, Kajang, Session Squad. Boleh ke tak? Mungkin kalau, mungkin, lah, mungkin you all tak practice kan. Mungkin dia kata, uh, boleh lah. Okay, Aksiden ni berlaku dekat Kajang. So you file kat uh, Mahkamah Session Kajang. But kalau tengok arahan amalan, Mahkamah Kajang hanya dikhaskan untuk kes-kes jenayah saja. Civil dia kena filekan di Mahkamah Wangi. Uh, so you tengok dia punya arahan amalan tu, kalau you filekan di uh, court yang salah, then of course you tak boleh teruskan proceeding tu lah. So kena kena buat application selanjutnya to transfer the proceeding dan sebagainya. It cost lah. This issue cost tu kan jadi banyak lah. You can delay dari segi masa uh, nak transfer dan sebagainya. 
mendapatkan akan membebankan klien. Um, sir. Okay, ini lah. Okay, then last part. Yes. Uh, arahan, ah uh, yes, saya. Arahan amalan yang kot tu nak baca kat mana? Arahan um, amalan ni dia you can actually you can be downloaded from uh, uh, kehakiman punya website ni. Banyak arahan amalan ni. Uh, so bergantung uh, uh, proceeding apa yang you nak refer lah. Because not all uh, kata procedure requirements ni are either rules of court. Tapi dalam dalam rules of court ni dia kata yang basic lah. Okay. Sebab perincian dia, dia akan buat by way of arahan amalan. Okay. Arahan amalan tu banyak lah. Tapi through practice baru kita tahu lah. Okay. Uh, the filing code ni tu memang tak, tak ada dinyatakan. Kod mahkamah tinggi 22, 21. Kod mahkamah apa ni. Uh, mahkamah session for instance ni. 52. Kalau kes kemelangan jalan, jalan raya 53 kg so all those detailing tu dalam akan ada dalam arahan amalan lah. so it can be revised from time to time so you can tengok lah uh, those uh, maybe the old practice direction which has been revoked to be seeded by replaced by new one so from time to time you need to 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 keep track dengan the latest practice direction eh? okay clear Rules of court pun ada juga, sometimes you ada changes eh, like, like those days As I start practice, so still you ada two separate rules of court eh Rules of high court 1980, dengan the rules, uh, subordinate courts rules eh, 1980 But in 2012, they recombine it, become the standardized version rules of court 2012, kalau those days, sub, sub court lain eh, registration session, you ada separate rules, high court, you ada separate rules, okay but now dah combine lah. Okay. Ada soalan lagi. <coughs> okay. The, the third part ni. Yang you kena tahu adalah substantive law lah. So ini yang you belajar dalam contracts. Uh, contracts law, companies. Companies law. Uh, banyak lah company law. Uh, land law. Uh, thought is part of the substantive law eh. Okay. Apa yang yang penting tentang uh, substantive law ni adalah the, the law that creates and defines the rights, duties, obligations, remedies and cause of action. You belajar thought ni sebab apa? Oh, baru you belajar cause of action based on negligence. Okay, uh, trespass, nuisance bagaimana, defamation, libel, slander, okay, what are the elements that you need to prove? Itu akan touch bila kita go for litigation, it means that is the merits of the case. First tu, jurisdiction dah betul lah. You masuk court yang betul. Okay. Uh, masuk teru pintu Bulah, ni pintu ada adab dalam rumah tu bagaimana that's the procedure and then ah uh, okay. apa tujuan you datang ke mahkamah sebelum kita akan dengar merits ni eh. tapi kalau tujuan you salah cause of action you tak betul you don't have the right then you akan dihalau keluar lah daripada mahkamah okay, basically that's the simple analogy lah eh. so cause of action ni agak penting you kena, kena understand lah Basic elements of negligence over there. Existence of duty of care, breach of the duty of care, and then the, the causation. Eh? Loss or injury suffered eh? uh, is directly caused by the breach on, on, the, on the part of the defendant. Eh? Okay. Tortious claims in banyak. Of course, kalau you tengok negligence, professional negligence, the nuisance, defamation, attacking, trespass, and so on. Eh? Banyak. Kita akan skip, maybe we can focus, I tak pasti lah, ada some topics, maybe you learn the second semester. Now mungkin I focus to negligence saja lah eh. Okay, introduction to civil litigation process. Basically, bila you dapat, uh, katalah, the facts, macam you dapat questions from the Tinizam, the set of facts, okay, you need to identify, firstly, it's the parties lah, who is your potential plaintiff or defendant. Okay, kalau kes kemalangan jalan raya, siapa yang, yang dilanggar? Okay, ni yeah, yang ambil simple lah. Actually banyak kes negligence ni. Uh, I kata kalau motor vehicle accident ni tak buat sangat lah eh. But other types of negligence, uh, normally I do lah. Okay, uh, then siapa dia? The top officer ataupun potential defendant. Berapa orang defendant yang you nak namakan? Okay, that must be clear eh. Identify the parties first. Then you verify your cause of action, yeah, nature of your tortious claim. Then you interview your client, 
you need to to ask uh, relevant questions because sometimes client datang just treat you macam macam eh dekat you so to 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 avoid wasting your time so you are the guided question because you nak tahu fakta-fakta yang to establish the elements okay untuk kata lah negligence dia ada tak you rasa duty of care dia dekat mana apa bentuk dia punya negligence on the part of the defendant so you ambil what you call as a fakta-fakta yang relevant relevant facts because this to be pleaded in your statement of claim eh Okay, macam cakap tadi, determine court's resolution, monetary, territory and etc. Check limitation period eh. Limitation period, you ingat tak? It's part of the procedural punya law eh. Limitation kalau civil action, uh, is six years lah basically eh. Kalau tortious eh. Tortious ataupun contractual dispute normally six years eh. Kalau ada, maybe is on cross mungkin lah tak tak ada tak ada limitation ni. Eh. So you need to check limitation act ataupun papa eh bukan papa sebab siapa eh. It's public authority protection act eh. Kalau you suing the government okay. Itulah for instance uh, the case of medical negligence against a government hospital ataupun against mana-mana public body yang you nak sama eh. So they may may have a different limitation act uh, sorry limitation period compared with the, the period uh, dalam dalam limit should act eh? because kalau bawah papa ni be three, uh, three years later to six months kalau you nak sue government you have three years saja to commence uh, legal actions against government eh? tak kisahlah jabatan kerajaan ke hospital ke sesiapa eh? nak katalah hospital doktor tertinggal gunting dalam perut dan sebagainya so you want to sue the doctors as well as the hospital pengarah hospital dan sebagainya so you need to know the limitation period eh? okay next apa dia determine the, the mode how are you going to file uh, you file statement penyata tuntutan statement of claim tu tu saja ke tak boleh eh? actually you ada what call as the mode of commencement bagaimana you nak commence that that legal action firstly of course by way of writ action tindakan writ eh writ saman atau orang selalu panggil saman eh satu lagi is saman pemula but originating summons is is not used for uh, negligence or tortious uh, cases eh because uh, tortious cases ni sebenarnya akan melibatkan disputed question of facts so you perlukan pembuktian dari segi saksi-saksi dan sebagainya uh, read action okay because originating summons you can use affidavit evidence sahaja okay you tak ada call witnesses dan sebagainya eh? so for negligence ataupun tortious claims normally it is advisable to file a read action and then you can proceed with a hearing ataupun full trial then you can dapatkan penghakiman lah judgment ni ok ada soalan so far for this part kok saya cakap sorang-sorang je ni um, sir ada soalan so far sir yep. please feel free untuk 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 ask ni eh. um, sir Yes, Afiq. Uh, boleh saya terangkan semula tak pasal originating summons dengan read action tu? Okay. Ini sepatutnya belajar dalam sebuah prosedur tapi kita advance ni lah. Originating summons ni kalau uh, kita kata kes-kes yang melibatkan macam deklarasi okay. ataupun you nak minta tafsiran mak sama uh, berkenaan undang-undang tertentu track dan sebagainya it's quite court hanya perlu have a look at the contractual document is matter of construction to construe the document saja eh so we can go and and file or getting summons supported by affidavit uh, in support so dalam affidavit tu you include sekali all the documentary evidence easy tapi kalau kata you want to file a negligence suit eh siapa yang tengok kemalangan tu macam mana uh, kenderaan ni sejauh mana kerosakan ni apa injury yang you siapa Mungkin you ada lah medical report pun semua tu. Tapi medical report tu siapa yang prepare? Uh, so benda Benda tu is like what we call as disputed question of fact. Okay? Bukan berbentuk tafsiran dokumen. Bukan berbentuk tafsiran. So you tak boleh uh, falkan saman pemula O. Ataupun orienting saman je. Singkatan dia OS lah. So OS is for cases yang kita kata uh, tak ada substantial dispute as to the facts. Okay? Tak ada pertekaian fakta yang serius. Jadi kalau ada pertikaian fakta yang serius, you need to prove ganti rugi kan? Kerugian, the injury itu setakat mana? Ada yang kata patah riuk ke? Ada berlaku kematian? 
ataupun income dia dari kemudian uh, kerugian dia kalau patah apa tibia fibula macam-macam jenis ni jadi dia ada dia punya uh, jenis-jenis uh, injury uh, how much yang you entitled yang semua tu melibatkan pertikaian fakta ada setengah you kena panggil uh, expert witness okay? doctors dan sebagainya to give uh, testimony in court so proceeding sedemikian you kena mulakan melalui tindakan read okey so tindakan read saja you akan berakhir dengan perbicaraan penuh that's why i put there is hearing ataupun full trial eh kalau hearing ni means dia yeah, you bicara sajalah cara it can be by way of affidavit and then terus ada hujahan eh? tapi kalau full trial maka court dia tengok senarai kuasa dia akan tulis uh, bicara penuh bila bicara penuh ni, maksudnya you akan panggil saksi-saksi datang ke mahkamah buat examination of witnesses and the city you akan pakai akta keterangan uh, so another procedural law yang you akan belajar lah is evidence law eh. so court akan uh, determine uh, case plaintiff tu kuat atau tidak atau you akan menang atau tidak is berdasarkan keterangan saksi, keterangan dokumen lah ok so basically there's a difference between read dengan OS eh. OS is simple simple cases melibatkan tafsiran saja. Okey, clear. So selepas bicara dan sebagainya, you akan ada what we call as penghakiman and judgement. Okey. Judgement ni katalah plaintiff menang berjaya proof uh, civil punya case of course on the balance of probabilities eh. Nampak uh, on the balance of probabilities means kalau you punya case tu nampak probable eh. 81% I think your version is true. kau akan grant judgement in your favour lah so betul tu dekat plaintiff eh ok so bila dah dapat uh, judgement dan sebagainya barulah you katalah kita tak bayar dia baru pergi ke proses seterusnya dia panggil execution of judgement pelaksanaan penghakiman lah bankruptcy dan sebagainya ok that's the, the what we call as general punya workflow eh on civil litigation ok ada soalan so far tak ada tak ada ok then i move to be uh, i tak nak pergi sampai detail macam civil procedure but at least uh, some exposure to you all lah kalau you pergi panel you nanti pun at least you dah ada sedikit uh, what we call exposure daripada tahan awal eh okey pleading ni digunakan untuk case-case yang dimulakan melalui di read eh tindakan read reaction bila you fakan read you tak ada affidavit eh apa yang you ada adalah pleading Pleading ni terdiri daripada what we call as statement of claim ni, eh. penyata tuntutan ni for the plaintiff lah. So kalau defendant dia akan fahamkan penyata pembelaan or the defense ada jawapan. Kalau defendant pun dia kata you yang cuai, dia nak fahamkan tuntutan balas, counter claim. Dia akan fahamkan counter claim ni, so this also called as, as a pleading ni. Eh. Then the plaintiff akan fahamkan defense tu counter claim ni. Eh. Okay, so this one adalah kategori pleading ni. Eh. Apa maksud pleading ni? Pleading ni, you will call as the You punya statement of case, ringkasan fakta You hanya pleadkan fakta saja. Apa fakta yang nak establish uh, uh, Negligence punya Claim against defendant You can pleadkan situ lah, siapa nak open tip Defendant tu siapa, facts of the case Tapi bukan dia, dia kata it's not part of Macam hujahan eh, ataupun you kena kemukakan keterangan tu eh just you bagi tell the court the ringkasan fakta okey okey a uh, pleadings provide framework eh, for the presentation of evidence at trial okey so that we can identify and narrow down the issues to go for trial okay? one thing yang important adalah kadang-kadang kalau case tu kalah bukan sebab pen file ni tapi sebab kalau you eh kat peguam because you tak plead uh, the case properly so ada fakta-fakta yang material tapi tak dapat dikemukakan di mahkamah itu yang yang penting eh because you mungkin ada keterangan tapi kalau that fact has not been pleaded in your statement of claim or statement of defence it cannot be adduced as evidence during trial unless you buat a uh, proper application lah untuk amendment you kena men men masukkan fakta baru Okay, so court akan disregat benda this one you kena ingat eh bila kita kata about civil litigation is adversarial system court hanya akan dengar apa yang you bangkitkan dalam pleading saja i will not entertain uh, other things yang tidak ada dalam uh, kertas kuasa mahkamah tidak ada dalam your pleading that's uh, rule yang penting dalam pleading ni eh. 
Reading dalam civil trial ni agak-agak penting lah eh. Dan fakta ni bukanlah semua you buat cerita novel dan sebagainya eh. Bukan nak letak karang panjang-panjang You kata dia kena pendek dan ringkas ni So, tapi it's, uh, depends lah uh, dengan nature of the complexity of the, the case Kalau case yang mungkin serious Macam kita tengok uh, corporate dispute dan sebagainya Mungkin dia akan sampai lah sampai 100 pages the reading saja Because banyak fakta yang dikemukakan eh. Tapi kalau case-case yang mungkin di magistrate, sessions court Selalunya dalam 10 pages, 20 pages Mungkin lah eh Tak, tak, tak lagi sangat lah eh Unless you rasa Tapi dia tak perlu banyak-banyak eh uh, Dia mesti Uh, ada concise statement dia dan material facts yang relevant uh, secara detail dalam readings eh. Okay, importance of readings eh. The case of uh, Lia Chow and Southern Bank, Supreme Court Readings, this are basic rule eh. Readings in civil suit are very important It is a question whether councils Question where the councils uh, either because of negligence or inadvertence choose to pay them scan uh, or no heed at all, and they do so at their peril. So, kalau you tak ambil, uh, you ambil ringan tentang pleading ni, especially at your own peril, eh, court takkan dengar apa pun kujahan you ataupun keterangan client you if you tak dapatkan fakta tu dalam you punya statement of claim. Eh. So, that's very serious one. Eh. Okay. A vital issue was not raised in the pleading, it could not be allowed to be argued or to succeed on appeal. This is foundation. Kadang-kadang eh? you start your case tu dekat mahkamah session. You tak pleadkan certain material facts, okay? you kalah. Tiba-tiba you baru discover benda ni dekat high court masa you nak appeal. Tak akan lagi dalam satu eh. Because the pleading tu kalau dah silap pada awal, you tak boleh tiba nak introduce new facts dekat appeal stage, okay. So that's why kalau kalau I, I advise for my juniors lah ataupun junior, uh, my associates eh. Bila you prepare pleading so statement of claim tu, dari awal put in your mind, uh, you're ready to pergi sampai ke federal court. Ataupun court of appeal. Kalau kalau start with session so sampai court of appeal. Kalau high court tu, you must be ready. Pleading you akan be subject to scrutiny by federal court. Because you tak ada masa dah kalau, kalau you salah dekat-dekat courts of first instance ni eh, You tak ada masa untuk nak repair dekat appellate level eh. okay, The court will not hear counsel for the appellate submission On issues and therefore appeal in this respect was, uh, These issues were dismissed okay, Basically kalau you submit ataupun berhujah Some uh, new issues yang tak dibangkitkan dalam pleading The judges akan panggil itu sebagai submission from the bar okay, Maksudnya fakta tu tak dipleadkan dalam dalam statement of claim, statement of defense you So you are submitting from Lepas tu hujahan saja kita ada apa pun makna di sisi mahkamah. Eh. Court will not entertain those unpleaded uh, issues. Eh. Okay, so untuk untuk penyediaan pleading, make sure relevant issues tu kena dimasukkan. Eh. Okay, katalah you file defence, you nak masukkan uh, contributory negligence as your defence. So kena ada lah uh, particulars apa yang dimasukkan kecuali yang sumbangan di situ. Eh. Dari prinsip yang seterusnya berkaitan pleading, ya, parties and courts are bound by pleading. Okay, bila you dah fahamkan uh, sesuatu pleading atau fakta tu, you adalah terikat, you are bound by your own pleading. Okay, you tak boleh depart certain, suddenly you, you kata, oh, masa keterangan, you kata, oh, uh, sebenarnya uh, balangan tu berlaku pada hari yang lain. Yes, you are call as total departure from your pleaded case. Eh. So, you menyimpang daripada pleading. So, bila you ada pleading, you ada terikat dengan pleading you Fakta-fakta yang diberikan, itu saja you Hanya perlukan kemukakan keterangan tu Substantiate your pleaded facts, okay Pleading is one thing, eh? bila you, you filekan pleading means you Bagi satu fakta dekat mahkamah, okay That fakta, it can be admitted or denied by the defendant, okay? your opponent So, kalau the defendant kata, okay, perenggan dua, diakui Paragraph 2 of the statement of claim is admitted. So they admit that fact. So it's not a tribal issue. So they tak perlu dibicarakan. So court boleh anggap, okay, fakta ni dipersetujui. It's a great fact. But katalah defendant kata, no. Saya menafikan uh, peringkat uh, 10, 11, 12. Kata tuntutan. 
Means I deny the paragraph. I deny your allegation, your assertion in the statement of claim. I deny unique claim. Kata, I, I, uh, I'm neg negligent. So, benda tu, it becomes a, a disputed fact. Fakta yang dipertikaikan. So, bila disputed fact, itu yang perlukan keterangan, evidence. Evidence to you, adduce to the court, to convince court, actually, my version of fact is the, the, the correct version. So, it can convince the court lah. Okay. So, that's the importance of, importance of pleading. Eh? Tapi, tak boleh katakan dekat court, oh, uh, sebenarnya, pleading saya itu salah. Okay. Uh, the true version is like this, 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 blah, blah, blah. Oh, cannot. The court akan anggap you menyimpang dari the pleading, then you are not uh, such yang credible. Eh? Okay, that is how the court akan assess you punya case. Eh? Okay, uh, pleading si, uh, is not only binding on the litigants or parties, eh? but it is also binding on the, the court eh? judges as well. So, bila kata lah, I plead kan case ni sebelah kecuaian. Tiba-tiba court tak boleh convert ke kata lah, kata particulars, butir-butir kecuaian, particulars of negligence say A, B and C. Okay. Then suddenly court kata, no, no, I think, uh, I nampak ada ada F, G, H, a new element of negligence. Tapi tak dipleatkan pun dalam, apa yang jadi sini. Tak dipleatkan dalam statement of claim ni. Eh. Court tak boleh, uh, kita kata, untuk untuk buat uh, isu tu sendiri. Eh. Ataupun dia, kita buat uh, pleading ataupun uh, isu baru yang tidak dipleatkan ataupun uh, entertain new issues yang tidak dipleatkan oleh pihak-pihak eh. so court also bound by the pleading okay kalau court buat decision on unpleaded facts okay itu adalah uh, satu bentuk kesilapan so kalau you pergi ke appeal the court of appeal ataupun high court akan allow you punya appeal eh. okay ada so far ada question berkaitan pleading ni Ada soalan so far? Clear. Clear. Tadi. So far clear. Clear. Tak ada jelas. Okay. Next adalah particulars of pleadings. While pleadings are intended to include concise statement of material uh, facts, particulars of those facts may be necessary for the purpose of clarifying or at least rating the issues in dispute. Memang pleading sepatutnya ringkas dan statement of claim. Eh. Penyata tuntutan sepatutnya ringkas. Tetapi ada beberapa isu tu you perlu perincikan butiran. Eh. You must provide particulars. Okay. Apakah bentuk-bentuk particulars yang diperlukan? Okay. For negligence contohnya, eh. tengok OD18. Eh. OD18 rule 12 of the rules of court, eh. particulars of pleading. Eh. Every pleading shall contain necessary particulars of any claim, defense, blah, blah, blah. A to the three. So, particulars of any misrepresentation, fraud, breach of trust, willful default, or undue uh, uh, influence. Okay? So, kalau case case fraud, ataupun salah nyataan, eh, misread. So, you can bagi tahu kat situ dalam pleading tu butiran dia. Butir-butir fraud. Apa yang di, dikatakan sebagai fraud. Okay? Dan kat bawah ni ada satu lagi, 1A, rule 1A. No party shall quantify any claim, counterclaim for general damages. Okay. General damages ni ganti rugi arm. Eh. Selalu kita tengok eh, kalau kes-kes ni dia ada ganti rugi khas, uh, special damages ataupun general damages. Eh. Okay, kalau you tu, untuk ganti rugi arm, means you pun tak tahu berapa ganti rugi yang you layak dapat from, from the court. Eh. It's to be assessed by the court. So normally you don't quantify dalam pleading dalam dalam dengan kata ganti rugi am sebanyak 1 juta pergi masuk akhbar kata pemfailan di mahkamah mungkin for layman mungkin dia kata oh hebatlah lawyer ni okay. tapi kalau for practitioners ah uh, ni bullshit lah okey kalau you takkan falkan dan letak satu ganti rugi am berjumlah 10 juta dan sebagainya tu tak tak ada dalam rules mahkamah eh. salah eh because no party shall quantify because it to be assessed by by the court tapi kalau kita ganti you ada you punya medical expenses injury tu semua dah you dah boleh quantify all the loss suffered by you then of course you boleh masukkan sebagai ganti rugi khas eh, special damages okay? okay berbalik kepada particulars dekat sini dia tak tuliskan negligence eh. dalam rules tak ada eh. tapi kalau dalam case law you akan tengok kalau you filekan case uh, negligence eh, kecuaian 
you need to provide what are the particulars of negligence. Butir-butir dia apa yang defendant uh, bertindak cuai. You can jelaskan. Okay. Sekejap lagi, I can share with you. Maybe one sample. Okay. Macam case ni. This one bukanlah negligence macam accident ni. Eh. Tapi dia kata negligence on the part of the bank in auctioning. Auctioning off dia punya asset or property ni. Eh. So allegations of negligence must be pleaded with particularity. Eh. So court kasi ni dia examine eh. So called particulars of negligence pleaded were as follows. Dia kata bank selling the 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 seat property at 86,000 on 21st September 1988. Ini yang bawah ni punya remarks eh. Item 1 is not an element of negligence. So apa apa elemen negligence apa yang ditindak cuai? Okay, bank menjual property ini pada harga 56,000 on 21st September. So apa yang cuai ni? Bila you kata allegation of negligence, you kena kata apa yang bank bertindak cuai. Macam number 2 tu mungkin okey lah. Fail to appoint qualified person to obtain true commercial value. Okay, fine. So you need to fail to do all that is prudent to determine uh, the true commercial value of the state property or the status of the uh, property market. Any item three in the court that equally deficient. You that specify, especially when you not what uh, particulars of negligence in. Inilah you punya, what are you are saying is the, what is the duty of care? Then apa do you mean, breach of duty of care? Eh? Because you can understand what you learn in the, in the contract, the contractual duty clear, kan? Contractual duty, apa yang tengok dalam kontrak ada, you, you breach, that's the contractual punya breach lah. Kalau breach of statutory provisions pun clear, statute cakap macam ni. Dia ada larangan ke, ada breach of a statutory provision. Okay. Jadi kalau kalau tortious claim macam negligence, breach of duty of care, apa yang impose duty of care? Duty of care tak ada kat mana-mana. Okay. Kalau you tengok tu, the court yang akan impose duty of care, that's the, the purpose of tort punya law ni lah. Because benda-benda yang kadang-kadang you tak boleh claim bawah contract, you go under under tort. Okay. So the court nak impose duty of care ni must be something yang fair dan reasonable lah. Itu yang you all mungkin dah belajar kan, proximity dan sebagainya. Neighborhood apa ni, principle eh. Uh, you can foresee that. Defending boleh foresee that. Uh, then you boleh foresee ni dia kena duty of care. So you can, bila you dah practice, you nak file kan negligence suit, you kena letak tu. Okay, defendant gagal, okay, apa yang dia gagal? Apa dia fail to do? Apa yang sepatutnya dia, is is possible, then he fail ataupun dia omit to do. Uh, so that is part of the particulars of negligence yang you kena letakkan dalam ni, statement of claim ni. Eh. Kalau you tak letakkan, then macam mana you nak kata, oh, uh, defendant ada duty of care lah, tak saya, ada tugas berhati-hati. This is very vague kan? Apa tugas berhati-hati dia? So, bila you, you tak boleh berkata, oh, it's negligence, sepatutnya court faham-faham lah sendiri. You know, dia, dia bukan minta court punya simpati untuk faham kan kes ni. You yang kena terangkan, this is duty of care. Apa dia, apa pressure. So that defendant boleh prepare dia punya defense. Okay, oh, this is your allegation kan? Oh, this is my defense. Because civil trial ni tak nak ada element of surprise. So, you kena be clear apa you punya allegation so that defendant ada opportunity to reply and put the evidence to, to defend uh, dependent punya side lah. Okay. Rules of pleading yang lain-lain tu adalah formal requirements eh. Contohnya you kena dibahagikan dalam bentuk perenggan. Di perenggan satu numbered consecutively eh. Dalam perenggan satu sampai lima puluh. So you janganlah campak satu perenggan macam buku eh. Ataupun novel ke textbook dan sebagainya. Itu you buat you buat macam bentuk artikel ke the footnoting dan sebagainya itu untuk assignment mungkin boleh lah okay. but for purpose untuk court punya course papers tak dibenarkan eh you jangan ada footnoting just number paragraph paragraph dan kemas lah eh jadi kena pilihkan fact fakta saja bukan evidence okay jangan nak cerita punya pandang ko oh, tentang medical report lah okay kalau ada fakta bukan ada medical report the existence of medical report that's it you tak perlu terangkan content medical report tu apa dia. Tak perlu eh. Because it is, it, is, it is evidence. Itu adalah saksi yang perlu terangkan. Points of law. Ni dia nak convert pleading you into a submission. Into a hujahat. Okay? It's not hujahat undang-undang. You tak perlu masukkan segala case law. Statutory provision tak perlu eh. 
Tapi ada sesetengah keys. Macam limitation. Defense of limitation is a special defense. Eh? You perlu plead kan. You are, you are going to rely on that. Okay? So you need to plead. That's why they, they use the word may. May be pleaded. Eh? Then particulars of pleading to formulate a complete course of action. And then last kali, dalam pleading you adalah relief. Apa you nak pohon? Negligence is a cause of action. No, this is a basis to you file claim. But at the end, lepas you dah cerita kat mahkamah, okay, uh, I'm satisfied you can mention memang defend negligent. So apa you nak from the court? So that is the you know, prayers for, for relief. You nak ganti rugi ke? Kalau defamation tu dia nak permohonan maaf. Ataupun you nak uh, injunction, declaratory relief dan sebagainya. Various remedies lah you nak pohon kepada mahkamah. Eh. So you kena jelaskan lah. Tapi you nak minta cause, uh, faedah. So benda-benda tu you kena tuntut dalam uh, Okay Then amendment of pleadings uh, Kalau ada Mungkin client you tak provide you, uh, to, Tak provide you with sufficient information uh, Then you terus tak fahamkan case di mahkamah eh. And suddenly you realise Oh ada fakta-fakta yang perlu mungkin ditambah To clarify kan the, the issues Narrow down the disputes So you need to make application to court to amend your pleading. Buat pindaan eh, to masukkan isu-isu baru. You tak boleh masukkan begitu saja. You kena buat proper. Itu yang kalau kalau nanti you dah buat chambering dan sebagainya, mungkin you akan nampak. Eh. Pindaan ni ada underline color merah. Yang mana you tersilap, you nak potong, you strike through. So use the, the red pink punya pen. Eh. Okay, this one tak nak go to detail sangat lain. Eh. Okay, striking out pleading adalah satu bentuk permohonan. Katalah, you falkan a uh, negligent suit against me. I tengok you punya cause of action ni tak apa-apa. Salah jurisdiction court ke dan sebagainya. Tapi mungkin case you dah time back. So as a defendant, and then I make up your claim. Okay. Then I check up strike out ni maksudnya terus buang. You tak perlu dengar merit lagi dah. Okay. Court ni ada, ada dua wording ni selalu. Lepas uh, tu the case is struck out. Case strike out ni dia buang kes. Kalau strike out ni maksudnya dia, you boleh file balik. Kan? Because dia tak dengar on merit. Kadang-kadang dia tengok uh, peguam tak hadir. Okay, case ni dia buang. Case strike out because uh, apa ni? absence of lawyers. Lawyers tak datang. Case okay, strike out. Means you boleh reinstate. Hidupkan semula ataupun you file balik. Tapi ada satu lagi wording dia kata dismiss. Bila case dismiss. Maksudnya kes tu telah ditolak. Okay, bukan dibuang. Eh. You dah ditolak ni maksudnya court dah dengar merits kes. Okay, I'm, I'm satisfied. I tolak kes ni. So, you tak boleh file semula dah. Okay, bila dismiss means dia dah rest dari kata. Eh. So, the only avenue that you have adalah untuk appeal ke higher level lah. Itu saja ni. Eh. Okay, kalau dalam strike out ni maksudnya ni dia akan kalau tengok kat sini. Kalau kes you dah time back, dia akan minta strike out kes tu. Dan dia akan minta action tu to be dismiss. Okay. Dua-dua sekali dia akan minta. So, katalah kes memang dari segi pleading you agak weak ya. Eh? You tak betul-betul formulate a negligent suit. Defendant managed to strike out, you dah tak boleh filekan lagi dah a new negligent suit. Itu bahaya dia kalau you punya pleading tu lemah. Eh? Very weak. Kau tengok, it's obviously not sustainable to proceed untuk trial. So, kau akan terus batalkan kes you. That's why bila you nak buat... Uh, Especially bila you act for the plaintiff, eh? make sure statement of claim you very comprehensive so that it is not easy for the defendant to strike out the case. Because kalau strike out at very preliminary stage, then chances susah sikit lah untuk you nak remedy kan, you get, nak advise to your client to file fresh out, boleh dah kata. Okay. okay. Strike out the sama juga lah eh. Just case ni, I share berkenaan thought eh, thought lain lah eh. This one is uh, public institutions. Kalau you tengok sini, it's a federal court decision eh. You tengok what I'm saying. We have at the outset eh, examining statement of claim in the instant appeals, blah, 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 blah. The last paragraph to refer to paragraphs 21 to 23 inclusive where the elements as uh, set out above have been to our minds adequately met. Apa yang nak cuba sampaikan dekat kes ni adalah Mahkamah, eh, tak kisahlah high court sampai lah ke federal court eh, Bila dia akan deal dengan strike out Dia akan tengok one by one all your pleadings, paragraph you 
Kalau paragraf dalam statement of claim tu lemah tak disclose di basic elements macam case ni apa asal dia punya uh, thought public discussions ya. Eh? Jadi kalau dia tak disclose mana elemen negligence mana elemen duty of care ni? Breach ni di mana? Causation ni di mana? Kalau benda terlampau lemah you tak linkkan elemen semua mesti belajar dengan doktor Nizam lah. Uh, thought semua ni key three elements semua tu. Tapi you tak linkkan dalam statement of claim you. Tak ada di situ. So court akan nampak uh, Sorry lah, saya terpaksa batalkan dia punya kes. Kod akan go through. Dia, dia nak tengok evidence lagi. Bila kita tengok about striking out ni, we just tengok pleadings you sahaja. Mungkin client you memang ada lah evidence lain dan sebagainya. Tapi kalau facts you salah ataupun facts you tak lengkap. Uh, so sorry lah, kod akan, akan batalkan dia punya kes. So it is quite important untuk, untuk uh, lawyers to vigilant, meticulous dalam drafting your pleading ni. Eh. Okay, apa yang perlu buat? Stream of claim is the first thing to be found. Eh? So there is no specific time frame fixed for the purpose uh, of filing court. So one thing you can ingat, bila you just act for the plaintiff, you tak ada hard masa. Of course, of course you ada limitation period lah eh. Bawa limitation act ataupun bawa apa-apa eh. But you can take your own time untuk craftkan the first statement of claim to must be comprehensive. Kalau you rasa ada additional facts, you tak cukup get additional facts from your client. Okay? So bila you, once you dah file ke court tu, court sekarang ni ada KPI yang cepat eh. You need to dispose the case within 6 months, 9 months. Court kadang-kadang tak ada masa lah nak allow you nak buat amendment dan sebagainya. Okay? So that's why bila you nak draftkan statement of claim tu, take your time, make sure all the elements are, are there and then plead properly. Eh? Bila dah file tu, for defendant lain sikit. Bila you dah receive uh, same of claim, punya tuntutan, you akan masukkan appearance and you have 14 days untuk filekan di sini, defense, perbelaan. Eh. So for defense ni, dia akan cepat lah. So lepas tu, you akan nak filekan reply to defense pun 14 days. All the 14 days rule akan, akan digunakan pakai. But the first uh, pleading ni, statement of claim ni, dia special sikit. Bukan you yang akan bawa case, burden is on you. So, court tak kira lah sekatan di situ eh. Ini, ada soalan? Um, ada. Sir. Yep. Azrul ke Afiq? Uh, saya Afiq, Afiq. Okay. Yes, uh, soalan saya, um, pasal dalam slide sebelum ni, pasal strike out dengan dismiss tu. Uh, okay. Yang court strike out tu, tu waktu hearing ke atau sebab se, se, macam mana sebab saya cakap tadi um, Dia tengok dia baca fact tu tapi dia tak tengok merit lagi so itu itu memang waktu tengah trial lah macam tu Okay, uh, bukan tengah trial lah, eh. lepas you filekan read saman ni, eh. read, read lah Okay Dia di, di anggap sebagai interlocutory application, eh. you akan filekan notice permohonan then you akan ada satu affiliate sokongan lah. So kenapa, apa grounds you nak strike out. So bila kalau you nak, kalau isu dia adalah tiada kawasan tindakan mula sebab no reasonable cause of action. So court tak akan tengok dah affiliate evidence ke, dokumen dan sebagainya. Court akan tengok you punya statement of claim saja. They can examine the statement of claim. Okay, in the eyes of the court. Okay, benda ni is uh, disclose tak uh, cause of action yang boleh pergi trial. Kalau court nampak pak, hmm, No, you tak plead all the basic elements then court akan terus strike out the case lah okay, okay so court akan fixkan satu hearing, that's why bicara tu lain eh dia bukan full trial, bukan bicara penuh so dia akan bicara permohonan, you fakkan notice permohonan untuk strike out, court akan dengarkan bicara permohonan tersebut so bila fakkan di mahkamah ni, dia akan start bila you fakkan read, dia akan panggil enclosure one kan, lampiran satu dia ada nombor, setiap dokumen yang di fakkan tu ada nombor, so this is enclosure one read, statement of claim Pilihan tertentuan, enclosure number 2. Okay. Then katalah you ada uh, appearance, kehadiran daripada defendant, enclosure 3. Pembelaan daripada defendant, enclosure 4. Then tiba-tiba, okay, defendant kata, selepas dia file kan defense, I want to file a striking application. Then dia akan menjadi enclosure 5. So, court akan fixkan perbicara uh, bicara untuk enclosure 5. Notis uh, pendengaran, uh, lampiran 5. So, that's the hearing for that enclosure lah. Bicara penuh nanti kalau kalau court kata okay, tak nak uh, strike out ni, no, I tak nak strike out this case, we proceed with full trial. Full trial nanti adalah enclosure one, the read is up. Okay, clear. Okay, boleh dukar ni. 
Maksudnya yang meminta untuk try out tu adalah kita. kita maksudnya kita yang membawa kes tu. Macam tu ke? Normally defendant lah. Kalau plaintiff yang bawa kes. So defendant kata kes you tak kuat. Pleadings you lemah. Weak kan. Ataupun tak ada disclose any reasonable cause of action. Defendant can file. To strike out. Eh? File application to strike out you punya kes. The plaintiff's. Okay. So bila dia strike out ni maksudnya saya tak perlu pergi perbicaraan penuh Saya tak perlu panggil saksi dan sebagainya Kalau tengok pleading tu saja tengok hmm, okay. Tak perlu panggil saksi Tak ada merit punya kes Tapi kes you yes, kes you dah time but You nak argue apa lagi? Buang kes Mungkin okay, accident tu berlaku tahun 2000 Personally saya baru ada uh, Court of appeal decision Kita argue time but Kes tu berlaku is 2003 kot 2019 baru dia falkan tindakan So of course I I fucking strike. So application lah for my client. So court high court mungkin tak agree lah eh. Tapi bila kita appeal to court of appeal, court of appeal nampak yes, it's clear cut, it's time but. So terus dibatalkan. Tak perlu pergi bicara penuh. So dari segi cost tu, jimat sikit lah. Okay, clear. Clear. Clear, clear. Sama juga macam yang cakap dia kata you Mungkin baru discover ada mistake dekat you mesti orang statement of claim ni. Eh? You nak fahamkan pindaan. Case is notice permohonan. You fahamkan notice permohonan untuk uh, then they can fix can bicara lah. Record nak allow ataupun tu. Okay. Okay clear eh. Ada soalan lain? Sorry. Okay. Dari segi drafting statement oh, of claim. Sir, sir. Oh, yes. Satu lagi. Uh, yang uh, dismiss, kalau dismiss tu memang daripada trial lah. Ke memang dismiss daripada awal-awal tu juga dia terus boleh dismiss juga? Faham ke? Tak faham eh. Dia, kalau dalam striking out punya application ni. Eh. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Macam ni? Kalau striking out application ni. Eh, maksudnya dia fahamkan permohonan striking out ni. Eh. Bila court tengok permohonan strike out tu, dia strike out, normally dia akan prayers ada satu lagi adalah dia akan dismiss sekali ni. I go back to the rules eh. Sorry. To be smart eh. Court may at any stage of the proceeding order to be struck out eh. Or amended any pleading, don't say lah kalau tak ada reasonable cause of action, scandalous ataupun dia delay fair trial ataupun it's abuse of the court process court boleh salah satu ni uh, strike out the case eh. but the court kita ada dekat suit and eh, and may order the action to be stayed or dismiss ok dia boleh juga arahkan case tersebut dismiss so dibatalkan satu dia strike out satu lagi dia dismiss so bila you fahamkan permohonan strike out ni normally akan minta dua order lah to strike out the, the, the pleading and the read the action itself to be dismissed Ni, you strike out ni kat atas ni adalah pleading eh. Okay, kat bawah ni adalah action to tindakan tersebut. The suit itself to be dismissed. Bila dia dismiss, maksudnya dia tak boleh fahamkan semula di mahkamah. Jadi itu yang dia panggil rest judicata. Case okay, sudah dah utamat lah. So the only avenue kalau you tak puas hati pun, you not satisfied, you need to appeal to the higher level. Okay, clear? Yes, clear. Thank you, sir. Ada kes-kes yang cakap tu macam... You filekan kes, dah, dah tetapkan untuk bicara tentang pengurusan kes. Tiba-tiba you sebagai peguam tak datang. Strike out you punya kes. Bila dia strike out kes tu adalah dibuang saja. Tapi the action tu dia tak dismiss lagi. Maksudnya dia tak dengar on merit lagi. So you boleh filekan semula kes tu. Oh, kes batal sebab lawyer tak datang. Lawyer, accident. Court bengang. Ah, dia pun sebelas dah ni tak datang lagi lawyer ni. Ha, batal kes ni. So you boleh filekan kemudian permohonan untuk hidupkan semula read tersebut reinstate the action ataupun you boleh file afresh okay clear eh? that's part of the strike out lah okay it's a bit technical sikit kat situ eh difference antara strike out dengan dismiss okay boleh proceed boleh eh, boleh boleh Okay, preliminary aspect bila you nak buat statement of claim ni first kali description of the litigants eh siapa litigants you kena describe siapa plaintiff, siapa defendant 
So kalau plaintiff you must be able to show that he or she has a local standby to commence legal action. Either in personal capacity ataupun in the capacity of administrator as administrator, executor ataupun sebagainya. Kita tengok kadang-kadang kes kemalangan tu kadang-kadang dia melibatkan kanak-kanak. Kanak-kanak ni minor below 18 years old. So siapa yang nak buat tindakan? Kita boleh hire peguam dan sebagainya. So yang akan buat tindakan tu kadang-kadang kita tengok nama parents dia ataupun kadang-kadang kes kemalangan yang melibatkan kita kata maut eh, ataupun kematian. Takkan you expect arwah nak bangun daripada kubur untuk falkan tindakan kan. So must be someone. Tapi it's really yang falkan tindakan. You pun falkan lah tindakan tu di mahkamah. So defendant challenge. Who are you? Oh, I'm the wife. I boleh boleh falkan tindakan ni. Tak ada. You tak ada legal standing atau local standby. You kenalah menjadi pentadbir pusaka. Si mati. Barulah. Tiba-tiba tengok dia, oh surat kuasa pentadbir dikeluarkan kepada kepada abang si mati. Ataupun kepada bapa si mati sebenarnya. So siapa wife ni untuk tuntut. So dia tak ada local standby. So as a lawyer, you kena determine siapa yang should be the proper plaintiff. Ha, itu first clear statement of claim. Dia kadang-kadang ada banyak potential kadang yang yang meninggal tu Tengok dia ada banyak waris ni. Eh? Tapi adakah semua waris akan file kan? 10 waris akan jadi co-plaintiff. Tak. You can advise salah seorang waris untuk apply. Uh, menjadi pentadbir pusaka. Tapi kalau dia ada mati itu berwasiat. Mungkin dia perlu lantik wasi. Wasi dah dalam wasiat, executor ni. So wasi lah yang akan file kan tindakan bagi pihak si mati di mahkamah. Okay. Itu kena clear eh. Ataupun you kena tengok juga, kadang-kadang bila you nak advice, bila dah cerita macam-macam dah, okay, kena majulah kes, kita akan file kan next week. Sekali buat cara yang kebankerapan, dia terbankerap. So bila bankerap, walaupun you accident, you tak boleh file kan tindakan di mahkamah. So you kena tengok aspek-aspek tu eh, identify parties tu, dia ada locus tak, dia ada legal standing tak nak file kan tindakan di mahkamah. So kalau dia bankerap, dia kena dapatkan sanction eh, what we call as sanction kebenaran daripada Jabatan Insolvency. Okay, you kena buat uh, merit case, buat opini kepada Jabatan Insolvency dapatkan permohonan pelantikan peguam okey Jabatan Insolvency kita kes setuju untuk you uh, filekan tindakan ke mahkamah okey so once you dapat sanction you can proceed with filing of the legal action against defendant eh sama juga defendant juga check juga defendant kita bankrupt ke belum kalau defendant pun bankrupt dia tak bisa mandi uh, tapi you tak minta lah sanction you kena minta uh, leave ataupun kebenaran daripada mahkamah ke bankrapan so the risky procedure tu lain sikit we cannot uh, commence legal action against a bankrupt person eh? unless we leave from the bankruptcy court okay, kalau melibatkan syarikat juga eh, kena determine whether uh, syarikat tu dah digulungkan ke ataupun tidak eh? so you akan conduct the one year search, SSM search, so one syarikat dan sebagainya eh? so identify the parties Kadang-kadang yang langgar tu adalah uh, pemilik uh, lori. Siapa pemilik lori tu? Oh, actually dia adalah Hizri Enterprise. You pun namakanlah Hizri Enterprise sebagai defender. Tapi kalau you belajar nanti dalam company loan ini, so property ship ni is not the same brand. Yang berhak company, kita ada legal entity. So you tak boleh filekan sama terhadap so property, uh, sorry, the enterprise punya name. You kena namakan siapa nama dia. Hizri Hassan trading under the name and style of Hizri Enterprise contohnya eh. So you kena namakan pemilik kenderaan satu lagi tu siapa. Ataupun kalau dia syarikat, nama syarikat lah. Ataupun kalau you nak uh, go on vicarious liability terhadap majikan dia. Yang langgar tu pemandu lori tapi majikan dia is company. You nak namakan the company as the second defendant possible eh. So benda tu adalah permulaan awal preliminary aspect you kena tahu siapa nak bersaman dan siapa yang berhak untuk bersaman eh. Okay, then substance of the course of action. Okay, this is very fundamental. You can take all the facts to formulate a complete course of action. On uh, negligence, uh, apa dia punya buti-buti dia. Katalah you buat saman fitnah, eh, defamation suit. Apa buti-buti perkataan yang you kata defamatory in nature. Kadang-kadang sekarang ni banyak Facebook lah dan sebagainya. Uh, banyak defamatory yang bersifat fitnah. So you can quote bersifat defamatory, so you can letak dalam statement of claim apa yang bersifat merendah-rendahkan reputasi plaintiff dan sebagainya okay. sama juga dengan negligence suit eh. dan juga butir-butir kerugian 
Apa loss yang you suffer Injury jenis injury yang you suffer tu apa dia Patah tangan uh, Kerosakan pada motorbike ke kenderaan dan sebagainya All the particulars of damage and loss incurred Semua tu kena dipletekan dalam Butir-butir kerugian Dan baru lagi you tuntut apa yang 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 You sekan You sepatutnya layak dapat pembahasan dan sebagainya Okay Substance cost of action, you must still make sure your cost of action is recognized di bawah Malaysian law eh. Macam you mungkin dah belajar tot eh, banyak kan Trespass, uh, negligence dan sebagainya Tapi ada juga orang fahamkan uh, Beberapa case yang you tak ada basis Ataupun your cost of action is not recognized in Malaysia eh. I ambil ni few example eh. Contohnya uh, tort of invasion of uh, private rights Atau breach of privacy rights Kalau tengok case law di sini adalah it's not recognized. Okay. Kalau dimensi mention eh, I of the view that it is clear that English common law does not recognize privacy rights, and it therefore follows that invasion of privacy rights does not give rise to cause of action. Maksudnya, kawasan tindakan itu tak wujud. Mungkin cedu, tak tahu lah dari mana Australia ke dan sebagainya. Ada jurisdiction eh, but not recognized in Malaysia. So kalau cause of action itu tak wujud, then you tak boleh falkan macam itu saja. So kalau kalau for lawyers ni, you dapat facts from your client. You can identify lah Dia ni mungkin ada pigeon hole ya Dia masukkan di bawah kategori dia apa uh, Trespass, uh, nuisance This one boleh buat case fitnah lah kot Mak dia orang kata sama manusia, actually defamation eh Or this is breach of contract This one uh, thought of conspiracy to defraud Boleh lah, tapi as long you, you Sebab layman, client ni dia tak tahu Dia hanya bagi fakta sih The grievance, apa yang dia rasa tak puas hati So dia cerita kat you sebagai lawyer kan So you yang kena identify what is the cause of action atau basis yang dia boleh tuntut daripada mahkamah atau tuntut daripada pihak defendant. So you kena identify apa reasonable cause of action ni. It must be recognized under Malaysian law. Eh. So you jangan just buat cerita letak all the facts. At the end of the day, bila I baca you must of claim, uh, actually what is your cause of action? Eh? I, I understand you nak minta ganti rugi, you, you punya relief ni sebab I nampak remedy semua. Tapi basis to get the remedy so apa ni? Uh, that is a quite important sebenarnya yang you kena make sure ada dalam your statement of claim ni. Kadang-kadang you ada breach of contract, uh, breach of fiduciary duty. At the same time you masukkan juga negligence, breach of duty of okay, care. Boleh eh? You boleh ada dalam one suit. There is cause of action eh? causes of action. Boleh. So kadang-kadang dia dipilihkan secara alternatif eh Normally you can use the word uh, The phrase further or in the alternative Katalah if the the Breach of contract tak sustainable okay? uh, The court is not with me Katalah contract tu is illegal So court refused to 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 enforce the contract No, it's, it's illegal contract So tak ada breach Kalau dia breach pun tak apa Sebab it's, it's tainted with illegality But you go on the second question is on negligence So dia tak kisahlah uh, Illegality tu But under negligence or perhaps the, the new uh, cause of action that recognize the measure is uh, unjust enrichment. It's no longer a ceremony. Unjust enrichment is a cause of action. So you boleh tuntut based on unjust enrichment. Uh, ataupun you nak kata minta deklar, deklarasi based on breach of constructive trust. Dia tak ada exact trust deed. Tapi it's a constructive me trust. It's a court yang impose that kind of trust. So it was possible. Tapi you kena pin kan lah, maksudnya your claim is based on breach of constructive trust You kena fulfill, uh, provide all the facts to to, to, to formulate a, a claim based on constructive trust Kalau tak ada, you tak plead kan, tak akan tiba-tiba court anak-anak kata Oh, I think boleh lah kot, you, you dapatkan relief ni bawah uh, unjust enrichment, uh, breach of constructive trust You just plead negligence je eh? So, kalau you ada various causes of action, masukkan semua dalam dalam uh, you punya suit ni Because this one you Uh, you need to remember eh, because you tak nak avoid, you nak avoid uh, Res judicata Kadang-kadang you falkan the first suit, you falkan breach of fiduciary duty Dismissed by the court Okay, uh, fakta semua sama, okay, since dismissed Court katalah ada bagi remarks, kata oh you, this one you should file under negligence So you falkan second suit, bawah negligence Actually the negligence second suit tu uh, Fakta dia lebih kurang je dengan first suit So court boleh juga dalam dalam case tersebut Tapi kata kan no This is abuse of the court process uh, Ataupun res, doctrine of res judicata terpakai So court kata because similar facts 
you should uh, combine dalam the first suit. Okay, uh, kalau tak susah lah. Setiap kali you kalah, you, you build a new conservation, you file a new suit. So court kata, kalau kalau in that case, court boleh tolak ini. Uh, new suit tu on the ground of abuse of court process. Eh. So kalau boleh, seboleh-bolehnya kalau you nampak all possible causes of action, masukkan dalam satu suit saja. Okay. Okay, prayer for relief ni, macam saya cakap tadi lah eh. All the remedies that you rasa you perlu get. Macam declaration, okay, injunction, you want to prohibit, restrain defendant from doing certain things. Tapi you nak ganti rugi up, general damages, special damages, ataupun exemplary damages, okay, ganti, ganti rugi teladan. So apa yang you nak, you can pick that. Because court takkan grant you benda yang you tak apply from the court. Okay. Lain berarti interest, cost dan sebagainya. Okay, practice uh, as a lawyer, normally you akan masukkan juga what we call as omnibus when clause. Eh. Saya tak pastilah mungkin kalau you buat internship ke pedah ke, ke bekerja di pejabat berkuam ke mungkin you pernah nampak same of claim ni. Eh. Dia akan ada last sekali tu. Uh, any other or further relief or the which this honorable court deems fit and proper eh. Apa relief lain yang court uh, mahkamah yang mulia ni uh, dirasakan sesuai manfaat oleh mahkamah yang mulia ni. So this is what we call as omnibus with clause ni. Eh. Kadang-kadang you tak tak minta specific uh, remedy. Tapi since you masukkan ada relief yang court uh, rasa adil dan munasabah, so court can grant under that omnibus with clause. That's why kalau tengok praktis kenapa lah peguam masih masukkan kosa ni kan. Apalah, apa pun relief layan yang dirasakan adil dan sesuai manfaat oleh mahkamah. Why you need to put that? Because to cater for situation yang kau rasa you're not entitled to injunction, declaration pun tak layak, general damages pun tak layak, but kau rasa ada remedy lain yang you entitled. So court boleh menggunakan inherent jurisdiction dia to grant relief yang you tak minta specifically but under this omnibus clause uh, you're entitled to 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 get that, that relief eh. Okay. Ada soalan so far? Um, sir. Yep. Uh, so maknanya uh, omnibus clause tu memang memang plaintif kena minta lah dalam dia punya suit. Okay, yes. Sendiri. Normally kita akan lepas semua masukkan. Oh. Kalau tengok practice uh, how lawyers uh, dia punya drafting, normally semua akan dimasukkan dalam sistem of claim. Eh? Kalau notis permohonan pun dia akan masukkan juga that omnibus clause. Because tak, dia tak ada harm, no harm to you pun kalau you, kalau you tak masuk Masukkan kata lah kita, kita salah, kita kilaf dan sebagainya At least, at least ada saving sikit lah kalau masukkan So that's as a matter of practice, you do akan incorporate that kind of, of, of relief lah Okay, jawab soalan ni eh? Jawab Okay, then dari segi language ni eh? for your assignment yang tasking to tenism bagi tu mungkinlah you akan buat in english kot and drafting you still more flame but uh, kalau you tengok di measure recipe pleadings eh kita ada section 8 of the national language which x the 2 tahun 1963 dan 67 normally all proceedings di mahkamah eh especially mahkamah rendah eh mahkamah rendah mahkamah tinggi semuanya kertas kuasa perlu di dalam bahasa kebangsaan bahasa Melayu eh Kalau you tengok commercial cases, uh, kalau you pernah okay, buat internship di bigger firm ke, normally kita akan ada in Malay language as well as translation in English. Okay. Dua-dua kena ada. Because judges kalau high court and the birth ni, actually they want prefer English. Tapi untuk kertas kosa, dia ada steam of claim, national language. So you kena, kena comply lah, kena, kena ada juga eh. Okay, tapi kalau di semen, especially di semen anjung eh. But Sabah Sarawak, I think they, they still, they don't have, uh, they don't lie sikit. They, they can use English, okay. Uh, as as uh, bahasa mahkamah eh, tak ada isu. Okay, bila saya cakap kertas kosa ni maksudnya apa-apa yang you sediakan sebagai peguam eh. Means that state of claim, pembelaan, affidavit, those mestilah dibuat dalam bahasa Melayu. Tapi kalau alasan uh, judgment from the court, it's not, uh, it's not uh, part of the kertas kosa, not court. papers. That's why judgment can be written in English. Eh? Ataupun hujahan. Hujahan can be in English. Dia bukan kertas kawasan mahkamah. Eh? Okay, clear eh? Sebab? 
Kenapa berlaku kalau you tak falkan dalam bahasa Melayu? <laughs> Ini keputusan mahkamah uh, rakyat. Kes Datuk Suryano Ibrahim dengan Tun Dr. Mahathir. So, memorandum rakyat yang difalkan oleh Datuk Suryano adalah di dalam bahasa Inggeris sahaja. Okay. Bila dia difalkan, di absence kat sini, di absence of memorandum of appeal in national language, rendered the appellant's record of appeal incurably defective. So, it tak boleh lagi dah. It's dianggap defective. Cacat eh. Because you hanya buat dalam bahasa Inggeris saja. So, memorandum rakyat dianggap sebagai pleading eh, at the appeal stage. Bila you falkan di mahkamah uh, uh, court of first instance eh, High Court, Session, Command District. Nobody steam of claim ataupun pembelaan. This is your pleadings lah. Benda yang you akan stand on it eh. Okay, tapi kalau bila dia appeals, you akan falkan memorandum rayuan. That is your pleading dekat appellate level. What are your grounds of appeal? Apa alasan you nak layu ke mahkamah, uh, ray, uh, ke mahkamah rayuan, ke mahkamah sekutuan eh. So, bila you falkan memorandum rayuan, is part of pleading. So, you kena buat lepas melayu. Then kalau you nak ada translation in English, tak ada masalah. Bila dalam kes ni, bila tidak ada memorandum rayuan in the national language. So, dia kata mandatory provisions under article 152, federal constitution, read together with section 8 ni, eh, national language in the act, means if effect payah tak perlu dengar because you tak comply procedure. That's why you tengok at the starting, mesti kita start uh, this, this class ni. Eh. Jurisdiction, procedure and then substantive law. All tiga-tiga ni amat penting. So kalau you ada merit dari segi case pun, bagus mana evidence you pun, tapi kalau you salah dari segi procedure, court tak akan dengar case you. So court akan buang case you eh. Okay. Ada soalan lain? Uh, sir. Saya mungkin last mungkin I akan share sample pleading ni bukan my case. Yes. Sir. Ya, yeah, siapa yang suka Afiq? Ya, saya. Macam saya cakap tadi, ah, yang apa? kalau yang mandatory clause, eh sorry, yang saya cakap pasal national, national language dia macam dalam kes Anwar tu, sebabkan okay. dia tak faham dalam Semayu kan. Hmm. So, so saya kata dia, kes tu di uh, strike out eh. So, maksudnya dia still boleh, eh, dia dibuang, buang... Dia terus dibuang dan eh, dibuang strike out lah kan? Ya, yeah, strike out tapi dan dia juga dismiss. Oh, ya ke? Because appeal tu dianggap defektif. Maksud so, bila kata defektif ni maksudnya as if tak ada rayuan di mahkamah. So bila that's oh. the effect of non-compliance of mandatory provision eh. Bila you salah posisi dia, dia ada satu yang you boleh cure, you boleh remedikan balik. Tapi bila you, you tak comply mandatory requirement court macam dalam kes uh, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, dia kata memorandum rayuan ni cacat, defektif. Bila you tak buat dalam bahasa Melayu. Bila defektif means as if tak ada rayuan, apa je yang nak dengar. Hmm. Sama juga kalau statement of claim ni tiba-tiba you fakkan ni So as if uh, you tak ada suit pun Bila I strike out tu, that's it lah, tak ada lah Sayang hmm, lah okay. Dengan lain, uh, rezeki, keadilan dan sebagainya Okay uh, That's the impact of non-compliance of procedure uh, Bila you belajar ni mungkin nampak uh, Mungkin tak adil lah, tapi that's part of the practice lah That's why you can polish your procedure kalau saya tengok dari segi substantive law, dia punya jurisdiction prosedur pun dah very important eh, when it comes to uh, practice. Okay, ada soalan lain? Oh, okay. Ada. Ini ambil contoh, kes lain lah eh. Kau jarang buat kalau kes insiden ni. Okay, this one read eh, yang cakap tadi. Uh, bila you you filekan kes di mahkamah, you boleh nampak kan? Boleh. Nampak. Okay. nampak. So, dia akan start melalui pemfailan read. So, this is heading dia, read. Kalau tak langsung mahkamah, session dan sebagainya. Eh. Ni katalah di kes ni di filekan di Johor baru. Eh. So, eh, dia akan ada kod pemfailan dia. So, actually kod, kod filing mahkamah ni you lah, eh. mudah faham. Eh. Kalau G ni Johor lah. Kalau Pahang si Kedah K dan sebagainya. You adalah K E, e K I dan sebagainya. Cukup Johor Baru dia ada J A. A 53 K J. K J ni lah kebalangkis kebalangan jalan raya. Eh. So 53 adalah kod mahkamah session untuk kes uh, accident. Eh. This adalah nombor 285 is nombor kes. 
05 adalah nombor bulan difahamkan bulan Mei tahun 2018. So boleh fahamlah bila difahamkan dapat nombor saman uh, ini ini benda ni kod negeri kod mahkamah nombor kes bulan dan tahun bila kita tengok oh ni kes tahun 2018 ni difahamkan bulan 5 okey kena cepat sikit habiskan kes ni so kod tahu dia ni KPI ni So bila dia difahamkan di mahkamah kata tarikh dia 2 Mei 2018 ini yang saya cakap tadi dipanggil enclosure 1 eh. Lampiran 1 read ni. Okay. So dia ada kat sini lah. Siapa nama dia? Defendant. So ini you akan identify the parties eh. Siapa Siapa yang akan diperintif. Katalah contoh kita okay. You put the identity card dia, nombor dia. Siapa defendant? Alamat defendant. Because you're going to serve the, the read, the summons on the defendant. Apa dia kena buat lah. Dalam 14 days dia kena menjawab tuntutan ni. Dan sama juga, you akan ada penyataan tuntutan ataupun statement of claim eh. Ini yang simple eh, bukanlah yang complicated Statement of claim sangat eh. So for purpose of the uh, academic ni okay lah eh. Okay. Penyataan tuntutan ni akan di, selalunya kita anggap enclosure dual eh. So dia akan letak ke sini description, siapa plaintiff, plaintiff penunggang kenderaan, nombor kenderaan siapa dia, nombor pendaftaran eh, defendant pemandu dan pemilik kenderaan nombor apa dia pendaftaran dia. Okay, then this one dia punya fakta kes. Sorry. Bila berlaku kejadian? 2016. So you tahu dah, okay, uh, okay, within limitation period lagi eh. Bila file, kes ni difilekan in 20, 2018, it's still within limitation period. Okay, kita sedang menunggang kenderaan dekat mana tiba-tiba di kilometer 41 jalan Johor Bahru Waitang kenderaan defendant yang berada di hadapan membelok ke kanan ok, cukup dari sini dia nak buktikan negligence dia baru fakta kes saja. ok, dia kemudian dia adalah uh, membuat dakwaan kecuaian, ok, kemalangan tersebut adalah disebabkan sepenuhnya dan atau disumbangkan sebahagian besarnya, substantially contributed by defendant's negligence ok, dalam penyelenggaraan pengawalan, ok, cukup tak kalau you buat same of claim macam ni Ya, yes, sekadar kata kecuaian saja. Tak cukup. Uh, kan? So you kena butirkan lagi. That's why kita akan ada particulars of negligence. Okay. So when you buat case negligence, you kena ada particulars of negligence. Butir-butir kecuaian apa dia? Okay. Defendant gagal memberi perhatian sewajarnya terhadap pengguna jalan raya lain. Terutamanya kena aplikatif. Dengan lah. Pisau tentang stranger tempat gila yang bak. Must confine to plaintiff. Okay, membuat pusingan you, buat you turn tanpa memberi perhatian kepada kenderaan plaintiff yang berada di laluan sahnya. Okay, plaintiff ada di laluan sah, defendant membuat pusingan you turn. Okay. Gagal menggunakan cermin pandang belakang ataupun cermin sisi kanan. Gagal mengikut laluan yang diperlukan untuk membuat pusingan you. Panjanglah kat situ, betul-betul. Because this one all the, uh, you you expect court to impose a duty of care on the part of defendant dan you nak katakan dia gagal melakukan uh, that uh, duty of care so you kena letakkan all of particulars of negligence so menerikan kenderaan dengan tidak komputer mengubah laluan tanpa menghiraukan kehadiran kenderaan-kenderaan lain dari arah belakang terutamanya kenderaan plaintiff so this one court barulah akan boleh visualize ok, oh jadi fakta dia oh, dia akan faham eh Okay, dah selesai dengan all the particulars of negligence, you can letak pula bukti macam kecerahan, particulars of the injury, the loss suffered by you. Okay, apa dia cost untuk buat laporan polis, uh, raja kasar, semua dia cannot quantify. So, dia akan letak sini, akan ditentukan pada bicara-bicara. Bicara, eh. You letaklah kos perubatan, lautan susulan, pembedahan kalau ada dan sebagainya. Eh. Dan last kali ni, prayer. Ini paling simple. Eh. Peraya apa yang minta, penting ringkas, faedah, 5% kos dan sebagainya. Jadi last sekali, yang cakap tadi, omnibus ni kos, relief atau perintah lain yang difikirkan sesuai dan manfaat oleh mahkamah ini. So standard clause eh. Then you can sign lah by peguam. Okay, sama juga kalau you tengok defense pun dia lebih kepada fakta je. Dia ada pengetahuan tak? Pengen satu, okay, tidak mempunyai, tidak mempunyai pengetahuan. I don't know who is plaintiff, so I deny, I tak ada pengetahuan. Mengakui, kiper dengan dua ni berkaitan defendant. Saya pemilik kenderaan dom. Mau pendaftaran, betul. So, saya mengakui. So, it is not a disputed fact. Eh? 
Okay, this one dia partially admit eh. Defendant mengakui hanya setakat pada tarikh keempat yang telah dinyatakan satu kemalangan. So, they admit yes, accident occurred. Okay, tetapi kandungan selanjutnya dalam perenggan kita dinafikan. Other allegation is denied. Okay, it is possible you draft uh, your defense in such a way. Eh? Okay, menafikan dan tidak mengakui butir-butir kecuaian. So, all the particles of negligence pleaded by the plaintiff, they vehemently deny. Eh? So, just takkan plaintiff, you need to proof. So, this one become disputed question of fact. So, plaintiff nanti bagi bicara, you know, plaintiff need to reduce evidence, eh? all the medical report dan sebagainya. Okay, apa defense lain oleh defendant, dia menggunakan contributory negligence. Dia kata plaintiff yang bertindak cuai. Plaintiff menunggang motosikal tanpa berhati hati. Tidak berpotensi. Macam tidak kompeten lah eh. Tidak kompeten. Untuk tunggang motosikal. Motosik, menunggang motosikal dalam keadaan merbahaya dan sebagainya. So kalau defendant yang nak gunakan contributory negligence. Dia pula kena pelikkan what are the particles of contributory negligence eh. Okay. So, bila you dah lengkap pleading ni, maka court hanya akan tengok pada pleading ni saja. Okay. Court tak, kalau you ada, ada apa ni, uh, particles of negligence, you tak boleh nak tambah lah. Melainkan you buat uh, pindaan pleading ni. Okay. Cukup kot untuk hari ni, malam ni. Ada ada soalan lain yang nak tanya? Tentang... Uh, sir. Drafting. Um, yes. Untuk bahagian kecuaian yang dia senaraikan tu adalah berdasarkan penyataan plaintiff dan defendant lah. Maksudnya bukan semata-mata senaraikan sendiri. Maksudnya kena dengar dulu apa yang plaintiff dan defendant cakap dulu baru listkan semua tu. Yang untuk uh, kecuaian tu. Maksudnya for for the lawyers ke? Mm -hmm. For the lawyers, you yang kena kena letakkan lah. So you you dengar version plaintiff. Normally you sendiri akan buat gambar rajah mm -hmm. macam mana accident tu berlaku. Uh, it is look, uh, looks logical to you. So, yang akan letakkan this is the plaintiff's position. Defendant gagal buat apa. Dia buat pusingan juga dan sebagainya. So, your version, you akan letakkan lah. So, for defendant, dia akan advise by dia punya lawyer. Dia akan letakkan dia punya position. Actually, eh, plaintiff yang kat belakang tu yang langgar air. Bukan air salah U-turn. Air dah bagi signal dan sebagainya. You yang langgar air ataupun gagal memberi kenderaan dan sebagainya. So, court bila ada two conflict, conflicting versions eh. You punya statement of fact dalam statement of claim Dengan dia ada punya, dia ada parti punya statement of fact dalam statement of defense So, kau akan bandingkan Nak determine siapa yang betul So, kau akan tengok keterangan saksi-saksi Dan evidence yang to be adduced in court lah So, kalau kau kata actually uh, Nampak mungkin sebenarnya uh, 80% contributed by the plaintiff Plaintiff yang bersalah So, mungkin plaintiff tak dapat sepenuhnya claim dia lah Kau kata dari segi liability 80% tu you salah Jadi you entitled untuk 20% je lah daripada apa yang you tuntut ganti rugi tu Because bila you pergi for full trial ni dia Ada dua kali liability Kalau you kata negligent tu, defend tu negligent ataupun tidak Dia liable ataupun tidak, liability Second thing bila dah liability is proven is a matter of quantum You kena buktikan quantum berapa pembahasan yang you layak dapat Ha, so dia ada dua benda lah Buktikan liability and then quantum Okay, ni ada questions Saya ada satu soalan Untuk buat draft ni berapa solicitor yang akan buat? Ke seorang saja? Berapa solicitor? Berapa solicitor? Oh, untuk your assignment ke apa? Uh, no, uh, real, real life Still lah. Kata in practice. In practice ni depends. Kalau seorang pun boleh je. Kalau kata road motor, vehicle accident ni seorang je. Lawyer je. Okay kadang-kadang kalau kalau junior mungkin you prepare then you hantar the draft to be approved atau vetted by your seniors lah. Atau the partner. Jarang you ada banyak sangat lawyers lah. Um, sir. Okay, or commercial dispute, corporate dispute, mungkin you ada a team of lawyers yang can go through eh. Yes, siapa tanya perhal ni? Uh, yes, uh, in case yang mana contohlah berlaku accident macam ni Baik uh -huh. orang tu tak mampu nak uh, upah lawyer Ataupun tak mampu nak bawa buka case pun okay. So, how how can they settle this down macam accordingly lah? 
Okey, dia kadang-kadang uh, kalau dia kenal dengan dia, dia tahu lah dia tanya tu siapa dia ada details dia uh, kalau dia nak settle outside the court pun boleh je kadang-kadang dia buat laporan polis dulu and then have a contact dengan defendant kalau defendant agree to settle outside the court dia boleh je so yang defendant kata ok, I agree nak bayar banyak ni je you negotiate outside the court ok, possible dia pun kalau you dah nak tak ada duit nak lantik lawyer, you nak orang kata self represent yourself in court uh, pun boleh tapi ada risk lah macam cakap tapi kalau you tak faham prosedur mahkamah kalau tersilap sikit uh, habis lah kes you akan dibatalkan selalunya kalau yang buat sendiri sama ada dia ada adik-adik cousins ke yang ada legal background ataupun you all a student counsel ni macam mana nak faham kan boleh tak tolong prepare kan Nanti pergi mahkamah dia, dia appear sendiri lah Macam ada satu kes tu negligence uh, I buat negligence against uh, apa ni? Sorry, they sue my claim negligence eh? Against a PhD supervisor Dia self represent eh? Sebab guarantor tu adalah abang ni uh, Sorry, uh, guarantor tu abang ni dan dia adalah lawyer eh? Peguam, so dia orang represent Sendiri je lah, dia tak perlu nanti peguam Tapi kalau for other day person yang tak ada Legal background ni susah sikit lah bila dia pergi mahkamah Okay, jawab soalan Ah uh, Yes Lain-lain ada? Ramai yang nampak ni, Tasnim, Yelena, Husna Masih ada di sini ke? Baik kalau mengajar kat UPM pun akan tanya dia orang Masih wujud ke ataupun hanya laptop saja hidup <laughs> Ada yang nak tanya lain-lain? Oh. Uh, uh, saya nak tanya boleh tak kalau macam uh, Jelaskan semula yang <laughs> Ayat untuk omnibus punya clause tu oh, So okay. tadi ada terputus-putus sikit lain jadi saya dapat tak dapat ni Oh, yang last tu dia akan minta uh, apa-apa relief atau relief atau perintah yang sesuai manfaat oleh mahkamah so, ini ada relief or orders which is deemed fit and proper by the court maksudnya kita minta mahkamah untuk menetapkan uh... kalau mahkamah rasa apa-apa yang yang adil lah, uh, yang wise fair uh, for the plaintiff to get then it's up to the court lah untuk hmm. memberikan relief yang sesuai Okay Okay, okay. okay sorry, lain-lain ada Dah ada lagi 10 minutes So, when you all start preparing your statement of claim Untuk next week Okay, ada ni, so Zul Fadli Ada yang soal uh, Yes. Uh, apa, berkenaan dengan omnibus clause tu, bukankah patutnya court bound kepada facts yang disediakan dalam pleading je kan? Okay. So, uh, apa kenapa perlunya? Okay, kalau omnibus clause, kalau you masukkan. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Kenapa diperlukan? Uh -huh. So, kenapa perlunya court untuk ambil kira apa perkara-perkara lain ni untuk yang dapat manfaat kepada plaintiff or defendant tu. Okey, dia kalau kita tengok dari segi anatomi dia punya stem of claim ni kan. Dalam stem of claim tu dia akan ada identify satu parties dia. Di tengah-tengah tu adalah cause of tindakan, cause of action basis untuk you claim. Dan last kita tu ada dari relief dia. Okey. So katalah relief you you pohon katalah hanya minta uh, ganti rugi khas saja. Tiba-tiba bila you pay kan ganti rugi khas, you kena bukti exactly kalau you minta 55,000.555 You kena buktikan exact amount to due Kalau you gagal buktikan, you tak boleh kata oh saya nak uh, mungkin alternative amount lah 30,000 pun tak apa yang ada Oh you tak pay kan pun dalam ganti rugi, you minta ganti rugi khas 55,555 kan So you gagal buktikan ganti rugi khas tersebut Tak Tally dengan apa evidence yang dikemukakan dan kita pun tak minta pun alternatif player untuk uh, ganti rugi lain untuk ditaksir mahkamah So tak ada So apa yang boleh mahkamah uh, tengok, oh ok you ada omnibus clause 
apa-apa relief lain yang dirasakan adil dan sesuai oleh mahkamah. So, okay, mahkamah kata, okay lah. Based on this omnibus clause, uh, I grant judgment, you are entitled untuk 20,000 sahaja. So, possible lah. Sebab you gagal buktikan tuntutan ganti rugi khas tu. Dan you tak fitkan ganti rugi lain. So, mahkamah memberi ikan atas beri kita tahu so, benda benda tu lah kadang-kadang you tak masukkan tapi benda ni dia kata saving clause yang bila you masukkan omnibus clause ni ada relief yang mungkin you tak pohon you boleh dapat lah daripada mahkamah kalau mahkamah rasa benda tu adil okay, bila omnibus ni is about relief eh dia bukan about kuasa tindakan dia bukan menambah fakta dan sebagainya fakta tu kalau, kalau berkata negligence you tak fit that's it lah But uh, bila kita go untuk remedy dan relief ni apa yang you pohon daripada mahkamah Kita berdoa kan, kita berdoa, kita minta tu dapat itu je lah Kalau kat mahkamah pun you pray that kind of relief, ABC ABC je lah kita dapat, kita akan dapat DEF Tapi kalau omnibus ni, dia terbuka sikit, dia, dia open sikit So court kata ABCD ni you tak dapat lah Tapi I think uh, in the interest of justice, I grant you F In a totally uh, relief yang lain yang you tak pray pun uh, That one is in the interest of justice lah, court akan beri kan Kadang-kadang ada kes-kes tertentu eh uh, ni Macam negligence cases ataupun defamation contohnya Okay, liability is proven, memang dia buat fitnah uh, Ataupun negligence tu, yes proven Liability semua element fulfilled, liability semua is satisfied Tapi on quantum, that's why cakap tadi ada liability, second is quantum So, bila you buktikan liability, tapi you gagal buktikan quantum So, court kata, okay, quantum ni I tak boleh berikan apa-apa ganti rugi So, I hanya award you nominal damages 1,000, itu saja you dapat So, dia boleh award nominal damages ni Maksudnya, ganti rugi nominal RM1,000 uh, saja So, just to, to as a token, yes, actually you menang case lah Tapi, you tak gagal buktikan, you, you nak RM1 juta, tak, you tak layak lah saya bagi nominal damages kat you, mungkin 5,000 saja. Okay. Macam kata lah case fitnah You bukanlah celebrity, you bukannya politician ke apa ke In terms of your reputation tu, biasa-biasa saja. Yang you kata fitnah ni dekat Takarakan dalam taman perumahan ni, bukanlah kata widespread satu Malaysia ke apa ke So kau kata, okay, yeah, memang Dia telah fitnah you Tapi tak nampak pun dia reputasi you terjejas banyak sangat So, I want you ganti rugi RM100 uh, possible So, benda tu court hanya bagi nominal Ganti rugi nominal saja. Okay, clear? Yes, yes. Uh, sir okay, Siapa yang Afiq ke Basri? Uh, Bas Bas saya Afiq Afiq Okay uh, yes, saya, ada dua, saya ada dua soalan Okay uh, Yang first, kalau tengok dalam statement of claim tadi Eh ke read tadi yang dia tulis, ada dalam salah satu uh, salah satu perkara tu tulis uh, defendant mengakui mengakui adalah dia cakap dia mengakui perengganam macam mana tahu ayat tu kan okay. means uh -huh. uh, macam mana dia mengakui tu means lawyer tu jumpa dua-dua sekali ke ataupun dia buat on behalf uh, on behalf of plaintiff je ke macam mana faham tak okey macam macam ah uh, macam tu Actually, macam mana dia boleh tahu yang kalau you act for the plaintiff you file kan sim of claim di mahkamah You akan kita panggil sebagai extract salinan tu You akan serahkan kepada pihak defendant So defendant ada 14 hari untuk fahamkan pembelaan ni eh. So defendant akan lantik lawyer So dia akan tengok dia punya statement of claim Barulah dia jawab dalam bentuk pembelaan lah Okay So bila dia dia masukkan pembelaan tu Maksudnya dia dah dapat salinan dari segi sequence ni eh. I dapat statement of claim you I refer okay perenggan tiga ni uh, Partial ni I agree, I admit But the, the rest tu I tak agree, so I deny That's benda tu yang berlaku dalam pembelaan lah That's why you can see perenggan satu dia akui Perenggan dua katalah tidak dia akui, dinafikan Perenggan tiga Sebahagian aksiden tu berlaku saya akui But keterangan dan dakwa lain dinafikan, so possible So the sequence system of claim comes first Then you're the defense after 14 days Kemudian plaintiff akan fahamkan pula uh, reply to defense Just to be turutan ni lah Okay, clear. I see. Okay. So, plaintiff fahamkan statement of claim, defendant akan fahamkan penyata pembelaan dan plaintiff akan fahamkan pula reply to defense, jawapan kepada pembelaan. So, this one tiga je lah pleading ni. Okay. Uh, statement of claim. Okay, 
being defense dengan apa tadi statement of claim defense uh, dengan jawapan ter, uh, kepada pembelaan jawapan dia reply jawapan tu itu yang jawapan bagi yang dia tak setuju tadi tu ke apa dia macam ni uh, bila plaintiff you file a case you bagi you punya statement dululah dia panggil penyata tuntutan statement of claim uh-huh. okey you lay down semuanya kan so defendant dah, dah tengok you punya statement of claim dia tak puas hati apa okey dia petikai dia petikai so dia akan jawab dalam bentuk statement of defense apa nyataan pembelaan okey bila you dah dapat you sebagai plaintiff you dapat nyataan pembelaan ya apa pembelaan ni you pun tak puas hati So dia, you boleh menjawab kepada pembelaan tersebut Sebab dalam statement of claim tadi, you tak jawab dengan apa-apa You baru terima pembelaan kan So you sebagai plaintiff diberi peluang untuk tutup kes you Dengan filekan uh, pleading yang dinamakan jawapan kepada pembelaan Reply to defense So normally tiga ni lah Yang kita anggap sebagai close of pleading Maksudnya pleading ditutup You tak boleh tambah fakta baru dah Next, kalau you pergi trial bicara penuh ni is about keterangan, you nak kemukakan ikatan dokumen medical report, uh, laporan polis, laporan adjuster tengok kat mana uh, kerosakan kenderaan tu di mana dan sebagainya so benda tu disifat keterangan already bukan lagi fakta eh. ok, jawab soalan oh, so maksudnya yang statement of claim, defense dengan reply tu belum belum hearing lagi lah so belum itu, itu between, between between solicitor je lah Yes, uh, between solicitors dan juga mahkamah You akan fakir di mahkamah Dan you serahkan kepada peguam satu lagi Oh mana, oh mana kena sambil court dulu Oh bukan terus pergi dekat solicitors tu Basically court, bila you fakir tindakan tu Bila all this pemfailan ni kan Kita panggil masih lagi di peringkat pleading stage mm-hmm. So yeah, pleading tak lengkap lagi uh, Defendant tak jawab di pembelaan So bila dia jawab, kita plaintiff pula nak jawab uh, Jawapan ke pembelaan So dah selesai semua, court akan tanya Okay, dah lengkap dah pleading. Okay, dah lengkap dah. So, barulah court fixkan tarikh bicara. Tarikh-tarikh awal selalunya dipanggil tarikh pengurusan kes. Okay, so yang court, court fix tarikh untuk kes management dulu. Jadi, you fahamkan uh, tindakan di mahkamah, court akan fixkan date supaya case management. Dan tak apa progress. Dia tak fix bicara lagi. So, kadang-kadang bicara ni depan hakim kan. Tapi bila case management, depan pendaftar dulu. You ada kalau high court tu, uh, yes, registrar. Kalau di high court, you ada penolongkan dalam pendaftar So, you akan tengok, ok, dah lengkap, lengkap, lengkap Ok, ada apa pergi tambah? Ok, bagi arahan, arahan, you comply Ok, dah lengkap semua ni, I akan fixkan depan yang arif hakim ha, Barulah you akan pergi dengan ada bicara Oh, lambat juga ha, Ok, <laughs> lambat jugalah proses ni Susah Sebab dia lah. akan tengok sebab yang arif ni kadang-kadang Dia akan pergi lah You nak, jangan nak datang bagi tahu dia baru nak amend lah Nak fast tracking out, I tak nak entertain Because judicial time ni agak very precious eh Dia orang tak ada masa nak buang masa dengan kerenah you punya kecil lah That's why kalau nak appear dekat uh, high court, court of appeal, federal court Must be prepared, you kena berdepan dengan pendaftar dulu Pendaftar dia kena pergi green light, kalau tak you kena bambu dulu dengan pendaftar eh <laughs> Sebab dia tak akan, sebab kalau dia allow you pergi depan yang Arif dulu yang Arif tak puas hati, ada judges yang akan baling file Oh, serius lah File dekat registrar eh So, kalau you nak pergi registrar tu, berjaga-jaga lah Sebab dia very particular, different judge, different style So, kalau you sebagai pendaftar, you jaga hakim ni, you kena tahu dia punya style macam mana Kalau dulu high court, nanti balik Oh, submission Kalau trial, 20 pages Interlocutory application, 10 pages, cukup lah oh, Kalau my style, I nak pleading you dalam bahasa Inggeris Ni habis sultan Sekarang high court eh tak berapa faham kalau bahasa Melayu, I nak, uh, you punya pleading, in, you can provide translation in English So setiap registrar tahu requirement apa yang diperlukan oleh Hakim Apply all the directions given, only then dia akan fixkan depan Hakim Itu pun untuk menyelamatkan you sebagai peguam lah sebelum you kena bambu depan Hakim Okay Jangan kata, oh maaf lah Yarif, saya saya ni baru setahun praktis, saya tak faham No, no, tak ada, but you patut check dengan my, my registrar So, itu oh, tujuan itu... dia ada pengurusan kes awal-awal tu Supaya perjalanan pergi bicara tu semua sudah nanti That's so, why bila ada pengurusan kes, you kena beritahu lah berapa saksi you nak panggil lah Saya ada 10 saksi lah Okay, so kita fixkan 5 hari Bicara Kan, so kalau nak nak, nak bukan nak blokkan demi dari Sebab tu you kena tahu awal-awal berapa saksi you nak panggil Kalau kita uh, plaintiff ada seorang saksi uh, Defendant ada seorang saksi, okay kita fix satu tarikh sudah habis trial 
Itu dia punya cara untuk dia fixkan uh, tarikh bicara di mahkamah nanti lah. Kalau ramai saksi, banyak dokumen, lagi banyaklah tarikh-tarikh bicara dia. Tapi ada kes kat mahkamah seremban, 40 saksi. Dari 2017 sampai sekarang tak habis. Serius lah. Busy. Dengan MCO dia. So trial still continue lah. Okay, lain ada soalan? Oh, satu lagi. Yep. Uh, macam yang saya cakap tadi uh, yang okey means bila tengok yang macam dalam kes tu kan uh, ada yang defendant tu dia kata yang tu dia dah dia dah akui 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 so means bila bawa trial dekat court so court tengok yang dekat yang yang disputed tu jelah kan ke ke dia tengok semua balik eh okay, bila Sebab you ada disputed eh uh, you ada dalam uh, sistem of claim sistem of defense so ada disputed issues kan So itulah hmm. yang court akan, dia akan fahamkan satu lagi dokumen Lawyers akan discuss uh, di antara dua pihak Begitu discuss What are the issues to be tried? Apakah isu yang nak bicarakan? You kena letaklah isu dia Sama ada defendant bertindak cuai Sama ada defendant bertanggungan Membayar ganti rugi sejumlah bla 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 So you narrow down the issues Katalah 4, 5 atau 6 issues So bila pergi bicara penuh Court akan tengok, okay, this je lah 6 isu ni saja kita nak bicarakan Jangan tiba-tiba dia nak adduce evidence, oh uh, plaintiff tidak memenuhi local standard, eh ini adalah isu bicara ke? Tak ada pun. So court akan tengok apa isu yang nak dibicarakan. So dia akan, the crux of the dispute tu tentang apa? Okay, clear ke? Oh, okay, okay. Faham, faham. Okay, lain soalan ada? <laughs> Ada yang lain-lain Apa yang soalan ke apa tu? Uh, satu lagi, Sir uh -huh. Apa beza limitation act dengan PAPA tu? Dua-dua tu provide limitation ke macam mana? Okay uh, Dia dua-dua tu memang ada juga provide uh, limitation But ikut jenis ha. lah Tapi apa limitation. beza dia? Kalau PAPA ni lebih kepada public authority kalau you summon defendant tu adalah uh, uh, kerajaan Kerajaan negeri ke jabatan ke kerajaan okay. uh, Ke apa tu pun macam sebuah bandaran local government Dan mungkin dia orang title lah untuk apa protection dia buat apa-apa Tapi kalau kalau orang lain, katalah you, you accident tu dengan van jenazah <laughs> Ataupun van ambulance Milik kerajaan, hospital kerajaan You nak sampai, eh hey, ambulance ni langgar air lah So, dia akan tengok limitation period dia, tiga tahun di bawah papa so, you, you, Orang yang yang terlibat tu adalah melibatkan uh, entiti lain, kerajaan Tapi kalau kalau lain dia boleh, bukan kerajaan, mungkin dia ada panjang Panjang sikit lah masa dia, enam tahun dan sebagainya So, you can, you can identify defendant tu siapa uh, Kalau kalau dia protected as, as public authority, different lah treatment dia, risiko undang-undang Okay, clear Mm -hmm. Tapi means macam public authority protection So mm -hmm. dia pro protection from what litigation ke? Maksudnya yeah, macam dia pendek je kalau tengok akta tu You can go CLG ke Lexis Nexis Actually pendek saja So kalau tengok section ada few sections tu so, Kalau uh, any dispute uh, Contractual dispute ke tortious claim ke Mungkin uh, public body ataupun public authority eh, Pihak berkuasa awam ni eh, And then, uh, limitation dilihatkan 3 tahun saja Kita nak lama-lama sekat -lama against kerajaan eh. so, Because hmm. kita you sama kerajaan ni yang datang bukan Hizri Hassan sebagai peguam lah Dia akan datang lah peguam kanan persekutuan daripada AG Simbers oh. Ataupun uh, apa ni dia panggil, uh, state legal advisor Kalau kerajaan tu adalah kerajaan negeri Ataupun entiti di bawah kerajaan negeri So the state legal advisor akan datang Kamar penasihat undang-undang negeri suara Tengok ataupun juga ada kawan-kawan juga -kawan penasihat undang-undang negeri Melaka so state legal advisor yang akan datang tapi kalau melibatkan entiti kerajaan persekutuan daripada peguam negara yang akan datang so dia di, di lain sikit tapi oh, kalau wow. kalau dia kata badan berkanun dia mungkin entitled untuk lantik peguam swasta lain sikit lah tapi ada juga kalau kes-kes yang melibatkan kerajaan pun dia bagi fiat dia lantik peguam swasta untuk represent boleh juga macam kes you tengok kes Tan Sri Syafi'i dia represent uh, government possible ada juga state government yang yang bagi fiat untuk lantik peguam swasta di 
Oh. Museum of the World. Kau cerita, uh, I think daripada pengkomen kita ataupun Taman Perasaan Undang-Undang tak ada kepakaran lah bidang ni. So kita nak private lawyer yang act untuk, untuk state government. Possible? Tak ada masalah. Okay, jawab soalan. Jawab, jawab. Sangat jawab. Jadi, dari segi itulah limitation dia, uh, maksudnya entity defendant tu siapa yang you nak saman? Kerajaan pun dia dia ada dia punya aset, dia ada kontrak dengan pihak pihak lain. Kadang-kadang you nak saman majlis pembenaran, eh kenapa? You, you, apa saya? Salah parking, tak ada. You ada tak puas hati dengan majlis pembenaran. Tapi you tak puas hati dengan jabatan-jabatan kerajaan, you nak falkan lah. Ni kenapa jalan ni berlubang, contoh lah, nak saman JKR. Kita pulang lah. Tapi dia punya ini, nanti you kena buktikan lah. Is, is it too remote, uh, possible ke benda-benda tu? Hmm. Berlaku banjir di Pahang, nak saman kerajaan negeri Pahang. Boleh ke tak? Negligence. <laughs> Pulang you all lah. Bagi pegum nak advise your client kan? I see. As long within limitation period tu, okey lah. Okay, yang lain-lain ada. Iza. Ah, uh, sir. Mm-hmm. Untuk uh, untuk pleading tu, uh, um, saya tak pasti saya tu salah dengar ke saya ni. Saya ada tulis mm-hmm. yang uh, lawyer terikat dengan pleading, so mm-hmm. it cannot be a man. Tapi tadi ada mention juga yang pleading ni boleh di man. So pleading ni dia boleh di man sebelum dia bawa ke proses yang bicara sebelum ke trial tu ke? Oh. Okay dia terikat dengan pleading sim your mouth your pleading sim kalau kalau you tak men itu je lah pleading you dia nak tambah isu baru ke tak boleh tapi kalau you uh, buat pindaan dibenarkan then you you are bound by the new pleading uh, ataupun the amended pleading lah uh. so yang dah yang dipindah tu itu je lah you akan terikat dengan pleading baru yang you telah pindah oh and then kita kalau nak pleading tak boleh suka-suka so kita kena minta izin daripada court Yes, uh, di isu ni dari segi, kita tengok dari segi Because court ni lebih concern on truth finding kalau kebenaran Kalau you awal, you pleadkan benda lain, oh uh, kebalangan ni berlaku di nilai Eh silap lah, berlaku di sini sebenarnya di dibangi Oh third pindahan sebenarnya berlaku di seremban sebenarnya So apa persepsi mahkamah di situ Bila you bertukar-tukar statement you uh, Ataupun uh, you terus nak ubah. That's why dia perlukan kebenaran mahkamah. Mahkamah akan assess adakah pindaan yang yang you cadangkan ni mengubah sifat asal, karakter of your your original suit. They can compare. This is the the original suit, original statement of claim. This is the proposed amended one. Amended one. So kau akan tengok adakah perubahan tu terlampau jauh sangat sehingga change the character of the suit into inconsistent character. Something totally new. Because you baru nampak uh, ada dokumen baru, ada oh defendant punya version macam ni, so you nak ubah totally. So kau nampak di segi, di segi di situ adalah this one is after talk lah from your side. You hanya nak reka-reka cerita saja. So kau boleh dalam keadaan sebegini kan tak tak benarkan pindaan. Tapi katalah memang oh sebenarnya tersalah. Tarikh tu sebenarnya bukan 2018, 2008. Ada benda-benda typo error you nak betulkan Ataupun memang you rasa, oh uh, fakta ni baru saja ditemui You just got the medical uh, report daripada hospital So I think it is quite crucial untuk, untuk I putkan this Dalam uh, butir-butir kerugian That court mungkin boleh consider and allow that kind of amendment As long it is made in good faith, uh, court akan allow Tapi kalau nampak uh, this is a tactical maneuver ni abuse of court process, then court will not allow that kind of amendment. So penting sekali bila you as a plaintiff, a statement of claim pada awal tu, make sure you betul-betul draft properly lah. Uh, minta, and then ask your client to be honest with you, jangan uh, dia hide certain information. Because client ni kadang-kadang dia tak bagi tu benda yang betul. Dia hide certain material information. Eh, ada satu kawan I. Uh, okay sebab EPF tak, tak serahkan apa ni duit kepada waris. Dia kata kenapa EPF serahkan uh, kepada mistress kepada ada seorang perempuan simpanan ni. This is non muslim lah. So dia question. So dia kata oh, I tak kenal perempuan simpanan ni. Kali bila datang ke mahkamah all the whatsapp conversation ada dekat situ. Oh sebenarnya you kenal pun dia. 
So kadang-kadang lawyers pun caught by surprise. So make sure you interview your client, make sure they buat full and frank disclosure lah. Kepada counsel, kepada peguam. Okay, ada soalan lain. Jawab eh soalan Izzah tadi. Um, jawab jelas-jelas. The rest, mana murni, Tena, Kuku ada soalan. Dr. Nizam memberi markah tu, participation. Tak ada, tak ada soalan lah. Faham. Faham ataupun tidak faham anda ya? tidak faham. 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 Faham ke? Okay, lain saya serahkan balik pada Dr. Nizam lah. Right, thank you so much Cik Izri for the insightful and informative session with the students. It was also an interactive conversation with the students. I'm glad that they asked questions, I guess. Um, even though they are just in their second year, so a lot of things, a long, a long way to go for them. Um, but it's good to have a question so that uh, I guess Cik Izri also can... It's your early exposure. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good exposure for them too. So I guess that's all for tonight. Um, that's the end of our first session. We will have another round next week, same time, same day. Um, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, we appreciate your time, Jaisri, and also your effort in making the session very lively and interactive with many practical inputs at, from the lawyer's perspective. So I guess that's all from us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, have a good weekend. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam.